Yes. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for having us. Glad to be here. Huge fans. Cool. And uh, we're looking forward to talking to you some more. <laughs> we, had, we had a good conversation off the air. We did. <laughs> Probably should have recorded it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> See, everybody listening to this is going to wonder what we were talking yeah. about. Yeah. Uh, it'll be a secret. All the dirt you guys aren't going to hear. So that's right. <laughs> it was funny. We asked a couple close friends who are like huge fans. Um, of emulation to like give us some questions and mm. we were like oh my God. we'll read you one of them later it'll come up but yeah. it was just like <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know <laughs> okay just silly yeah. <laughs> and then of course we got like what's your favorite album what's your favorite song yeah um, those are hard though it's yeah. hard to yeah, yeah. there's weird. always so much stuff that comes to mind so well and I think in past interviews, you guys have kind of touched on it. Like it's a representation of who you were at the time during True. your creative Absolutely. process. So Absolutely. it's kind of hard to pinpoint a favorite it is. album or. And like, you know, and we'll always say this in interviews. Um, usually it's the most recent release that we're most excited about. Of course. It's, fresh. it's new. It's new. It's exciting to play. You know. People don't realize that, you know, some of the first album songs we've been playing for like 32 years, you know, so it's a long time. It is a long time. And we still enjoy playing them, but, you know, if we skip them from time to time and you don't get to see it live, it's, you know, we'll bring it back eventually. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, there's plenty to pick from, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah there is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's some stuff we don't, we don't really touch too much anymore, but, uh, you know. It depends, yeah. And some of the older stuff is is quite involved in the sense of like maybe it, we like the songs, but they don't they're not the best for playing live, yeah. so to speak. Yeah, translate, but, yeah. But you know, you pull one or two of those out every once in a while. It's okay, you know. It's just a matter of doing that, you know, just knowing that okay, this is a kind of a quirky song. We'll just do that'll be the one that we do for the set. You know, we don't want to yeah. take out too much crazy stuff because sometimes it just doesn't, you know, doesn't. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, it just doesn't kind of translate great. Or live, you yeah. Know what I mean? Like yeah. second and third album material is is definitely a lot quirky to to f perform live, and sometimes that stuff doesn't always translate late, translate well live. And uh, I mean, you could tell by the vibe, by the response. And not that we don't enjoy playing it, but sometimes it's better to go with a song you know is like this one will, will get Pack a reaction. punch. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Yeah. So we're we're very selective, and we do like we do. It's probably the hardest part of the process is choosing a set list, you know, trying to pick songs that you haven't played. Oh, I can't imagine how hard that is for you it's guys. A, oh, it's, <laughs> a it's, like, it's, it's the nightmare. worst. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably the, the hardest like, thing that we go through. my least favorite thing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's insane. <laughs> yeah, really. It's just tough because you got a lot of ground to cover. And with every release, you have that much more ground to cover. And obviously, we're always going to be, especially like with the last record, we really enjoyed that one. I think everybody in the van, in the band, really enjoyed it. Like we all kind of, clicked on it really yeah. well and Which i think the songs rare. are definitely some of the best we've done and and they, i think they all work well live so it was difficult because we obviously want to always want to play a lot of new stuff as well of course but you know you want to bring out the old stuff too so yep. it's just so hard because there's so many records now and you're trying to mix and match what you can play within sometimes only like a 45 minute set if you're opening for another band you know even a headlining yeah. set how many how long you're going to play you know right. what i mean so yeah so I, it's it's definitely a challenge and we tend to overthink things sometimes I'm like well yeah. you know we we got to throw on some old stuff but ah oh, but you know we got to yeah. put on some new stuff because in a newer fan you know you just over you just can't overthink it just yeah let's just pick songs that we want to have play, fun with that something yeah. different and that's it you know I, so i think we've one, gotten a little better one problem you guys have that a lot of bands don't have is your records are very consistently good and oh thank there, you <laughs> there's there's no like era that people don't want to hear right you know what i mean that's, that's so true well it, you know if you ask our fan, hey, any one of our fans, what's your favorite MO album? Mm -hmm. You're gonna get a different album from every person you ask. Some Let's. people like Dawn of Possession only. Some people will say, Hey, I like 
close to where I belong is, is the best. Some people say failures is the best. Some people say atonement is my favorite, you know, or so it's a mixed bag. So you can't really, you know, you're not going to make everybody happy. That's the point. <laughs> so you, you try your best. You, you, you try to make ourselves happy. Well, that's, that's great though. I mean, it's not like they're like, oh, we like Donna Possession. That's right. it. Yeah, not, it's I mean, not a bad problem to have yeah, right? yeah. complaining. Yeah. So, you know, our fans are awesome like that. So Well, I think it speaks to what you've created over the years. Absolutely. Oh, okay. yeah, so yep. You guys deserve the credit. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys mentioned um, in, an er- in an interview like quite a while ago that when you guys started Emulation, you didn't have much expectations behind like having fun with it, maybe spinning out a couple demos to hand out to your friends. And like maybe playing a couple local shows. Yep. Like at one point, did you guys look at each other and say like, holy shit, like we're fucking doing this. Well, we got the letter from Roadrunner. Well, we got the letter, letter from Ro- Roadrunner, I think the second time. <laughs> it's like we got we got a letter and then we just were kind of like, like, ah, they're yeah. not they're Monty, they're gonna Monty, sign us. Monty Connor, who we're actually, you know, we're, we're friends with now yeah. in the sense we, we've known the guy for years and he's actually with Nuclear Blast now, believe yep. it or not. So it's great. And he's a super cool guy, you know. Awesome guy, yeah. And he initially wrote us. And and that's when we were doing demos, and uh, we saw the letter. And we're kind of like, yeah, they wouldn't sign us. This is just some kind of like we didn't really think twice about it. And then by the second letter, literally, he was just like, yeah, guys, this is not the best way to go about getting signed. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Touch us, so yeah. like, huh, maybe they're serious. You know? <laughs> we actually photocopied that letter and put it in the uh, Stepping on Angels Before Dawn release because that was just a, a compilation of our earlier demo mm. stuff. And we did a collage for that. It was uh, it came out a while back on like a Spanish label, Repulse Records, and it was just a fun thing to do. And the inside is just a, like a nine panel collage of all like just old flyers and you know pictures and reviews. Yeah, everything from, back from then. good the and demo bad days. Reviews. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. And Definitely we threw that le- bad reviews. I can tell you that. Yeah, yeah. Aww. And we threw that letter in there. Yeah, we threw that letter in there just as a goof because it, it was pretty funny. Monty was just basically like what Bob said. Hey, this is not the way to go about getting signed. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was at that point we were like, huh, maybe there is something to this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you got to remember when we started, this music was not a thing. Mm-hmm. It was like tape trading. That was it. Yeah. You know? I mean, the only band at that time who had a record out that was remotely like, you know, what you would call death metal would be maybe like Possess seven churches or right after that maybe uh, would be death scream bloody gore but mm-hmm. those like you know mm-hmm. you had a lot of the heavier darker thrash stuff you know what i'm saying like yeah. you had darkness descends dark yeah. angel you had destruction you had sodom creator, creator. Yeah. you know all the earlier stuff you had early sepultura and stuff like that you know but um it wasn't really that much you know it was basically uh you know trading uh, cassette tapes yeah. you know with yeah. people in bands around the world and and hoping you know could you know create a, a spark with that you know and it, it you know we didn't realize how vast and you know how big that underground movement was until we you know got involved firsthand and mm-hmm. started sending demo tapes out and receiving mail and and correspondence from everywhere you know and that was kind of mind-blowing back in 88 you know and yeah. that's kind of when we we saw wow this there is a fan base you know because my yeah. it was like it was like maybe eight of us in Yonkers. You know? <laughs> I know. It's, I mean, really. I mean, it we was, were the New York scene practically. It was basically. You know, it was like, a handful of other groups of people from around different areas. Yeah. And that's about it. You know, it was like, it's not like today. I yeah. Mean, it was like very, it was a very small niche. Mm-hmm. So there was no expectations of putting out records. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're like, records. Being just, signed and nah, touring. Definitely and, not. Yeah. So when we got that letter, we were like, oh, well, maybe we'll see. But, you know, we were young and green and we had no clue what was involved or what was expected. So, yeah, it was a learning process. Mm-hmm. Still mm-hmm. to this day. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys miss, like, the days of, like, tape trading and flyers? Yeah. It was awesome. Yeah. It was unique, you know. The because nostalgia of, like, waiting to get something in yeah. the mail. Like, everything is so instant. These instant days. gratification. Yeah. Today, yeah. yeah. It was definitely an interesting time, you know, like to get stuff. Yeah, you have to actually wait for stuff or go in to a record store and look for stuff and hope that they, Work for they it. had yeah. it, you know, and mm-hmm. yeah. it was a different situation. You have to sure. write letters. Yeah. <laughs> Who writes a letter today? <laughs> right? yeah. I mean, we would write, I mean, we would have mail nights that we'd, you know, and because we all worked. So we'd accumulate all the mail. We had a post office box. And when the first demo came out, we'd mm. accumulate like a, a week or two of mail. And we got a lot, you know. And then we'd have like 50, 60, 70, 80 letters. And then we'd all the four of us would get together the old lineup at Bob's house in his dining room. We'd sit at the table, get together like 9 o'clock at night, get some food, sit down. 
and we'd r- answer these letters all night. Oh, like that's so five, fun. Six yeah. in the morning. That's cool. And then we go to work the next day and then come <laughs> home, take a nap and go to practice. And, you know, if the mail wasn't finished, but the post office, that was the oh, best story. The post office hated us. <laughs> <laughs> Ross and I used to work at the same factory uh, outlet place, or I think it was for Saks Fifth Avenue. Yeah, it's like yeah, a distribution yeah. center. And everybody basically, everybody in Westchester or Yonkers, out of high school that didn't go to college ended up working there pretty much <laughs> so so needless to say we both worked there and we would have all this mail in our cars you know and then oh it's lunchtime so we'd go out to the post office right down the block and literally there would be maybe only two people at the post office behind the counter so i'd take one ross would take the other and we have like all these packages euro packages that they have to sit there and weigh and you know yeah, tag every nice single one yeah and st- we would create a line out the door at lunchtime that was like yeah. 30 people long and yeah. people were sour with us because oh. they're coming out to mail like one letter at their lunch break yeah and we would take up the whole time yeah because we're trying to expedite the process and get like right, you go here i'll go here we'll get it done we'll get back in time yeah. for lunch break so what we do we just we held everybody we were yeah. such assholes at the <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's awesome that's how we used to do it though yeah. Yeah. We, our, our, our overnight mail runs and we did that for a number of years and like uh back then you know you would promote your band through little cutout flyers you know yeah. something like you know yeah. like the yeah. archives that have show yep. flyers but yeah. you'd have flyers advertising your demo and the band blah yeah. blah blah so you'd get flyers in your mail correspondence from other bands that if you if you sent away for a fanzine you get the fanzine and you'd have like five or six flyers from other bands for you to check out. Yeah. Or, so we'd get them from bands. If we wrote to a band specific like Nihilist or whoever mm-hmm. it was, Autopsy, they'd send you a, a stack of their ads. So we'd have our table with all our letters and we'd just pull <laughs> from the pile and you'd have just rows of these ads. We'd like grab one of each ad and throw an envelope. And, and so it was like a production line. <laughs> well, yeah, but you basically also, the World Wide Web, you know. That was the way. On your mail. table. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's, that's how it worked. Yeah. That's how you network. Yeah. That's how you yeah. promoted other bands. That's how you promoted your band. <laughs> and... uh who is who is who were the kings back then? You remember with the flyers? No, oh, internal bleeding. You know it. <laughs> Chris, Chris from Internal Bleeding worked at a print shop back in the day, and whenever you got uh, any piece of mail, there would be literally like thirty internal bleeding <laughs> yeah. flyers, all I mean, mint, cut nice. And we're like, look at these guys. They, they so cornered the market on the did, mail man. flyers. Chris had it nailed, man. So we would send out. I we must have sent out thousands of internal bleeding flyers. <laughs> Just send them out. Like, we got a ton of these. Let's send them out. You know. And then we wound up doing our, you know, our first tour. Uh, not our first tour, but our first tour for the second record was supporting Six Feet Under for their first record, and Internal Bleeding was on the tour too. Uh, so it was cool. We got yeah. there, and they were awesome guys. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. So anyway, so that's that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Your turn. My turn. Yeah. Um. So do you ha- do you guys have any shows that stand out as? maybe favorites over the years i know there's probably a million of them but yeah, yeah. there's a it's, lot that's I always mean, a tough one it is. we have a lot of really memorable mm-hmm. experiences and shows that are there's a shows that you play really well and you nail it and you're like wow that was a good show yeah. from our point of view yeah. you know what i'm saying and those are the ones you're like wow that that's one you're proud of you know and then there's shows that are just you know great for other reasons. Maybe it's packed and the crowd's super energetic. We played in India this oh, past year. Oh man, that was a standout show. Yeah, uh, we went and played India actually for the second time about a year apart from when we f- we first played the Bangalore uh, uh, Metal Fest there, uh, open air. Bangalore that, open air. Open yeah. air. That was a year before we played. Um, we went back to Bangalore to play a club show. So the original, the first time we were there, we were there with Overkill. And they were there headlining, and it was us, and I think Alcest, Alcest from France. And so, and it was great. It was like a really cool fest, you know? And, and, you know, it wasn't like Walken or anything, but the Walken people are the ones that actually I think help promote it. And the, yeah. the organizer works at Walken, uh, and, okay. and they're they affiliated. Him. Yeah. But man, everything was professional. It was amazing. Mm-hmm. It was a great fest. The fans were awesome. Awesome. So, yeah. You know, and it was a great fest. We went back and did the club show when we did the tour in, in, in Asia. We, it was yeah, one of the was- first shows. August, yeah. In August, and it was like there. Were, I mean, it was like 500 kids at a club show, and they were ballistic. I mean, it yeah. was like insane. Really, it yeah. was nuts. I mean, you could see it. It's one of the few shows that's actually online. You could you could look it up online on YouTube, and they got the whole show up there from nice. like a view from the balcony, and it's like just insane. The whole show, the crowd was like absolutely amazing. It's like 1980s revisiting. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was sick. awesome. So that was definitely one of the most memorable shows from last year. It's like because it was just the energy that they were giving forth and. And just going for it, it was just 
you know, it was just really cool. It was really a good show. Yeah. yeah. We had a lot of good ones. I mean, oh, we had a ton of them. That just was like one of the standouts. We'll just ones. pick a few highlights from this yeah. past year because okay. it's hard to go back. Yeah. You know? Oh, of like, course. Oh, show. Yeah. yeah. You know, I don't even know if we remember past this list. <laughs> <laughs> Columbia was really good. Our first oh, time playing Columbia. in Colum Bogota. We did two yeah. shows, right? Because one of our shows somewhere else, I think in San Salvador, uh, canceled uh, for whatever reason. So they added a second night onto uh, the Columbia date. So we did Bogota two nights in a row at the same venue. Nice. Yeah. It was awesome. And it was great. Nice. It was crazy. awesome. The crowd yeah. was amazing. Awesome. I think yeah, that's cool. awesome. Yeah. Most of the shows on that whole that whole Chile, run were with Chile was last around. Chile we didn't do this time, but Chile was another memorable yeah. one. Both times we played in uh, Santiago were just insane. They take their metal seriously down there. You yeah. Know? yeah. <laughs> Mexico City this time around was awesome. Oh, Mexico City was just, uh, again, ballistic. It was like, <laughs> they were just amazing insane we played awesome. there in 92 for the first time that was our first time like playing in mexico and they flew us down there it was us in suffocation you know when our our first albums both came out mm -hmm. so we did this combined show in 92 that was sick like a thousand kids in this outdoor nice. like arena and it was awesome so we hadn't been back since then to yeah. mexico city so this time around was just yeah, it was, it was great. Awesome. So it's it's it, for us. It's cool because like these some of these areas we haven't been to like Colombia and, mm -hmm. and uh, oh yeah a lot of the Asian areas. So yeah. when you go there, mm -hmm. you're like, fucking people even give a shit about us over here. And then you go there and you get a crowd like that. You're yeah. like, wow, that's so fucking yeah. awesome. Who would have thought? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? so. yeah. It's definitely always surprising. I mean, even when we played in was it Berlin on this last show in <sighs> Germany? Yeah, you know, sick. Oh, I that can't was imagine. like amazing you know yeah. it's probably the best berlin show we ever had yeah. ever you know it was like really cool you know so you get surprised sometimes in certain cities like berlin has always been like yeah, it's been good but it's always sometimes hot and cold for us say you know depending on who we're out with or whatever yeah we played there we couldn't believe you know it was just amazing you know so yeah i mean we had a this past year was good we actually had a lot of memorable shows so we were very lucky for yeah sure. that's good do you guys ever feel unsafe um yeah, we've had a few times where we were in some weird areas that, you know, well, I guess being from New York, we're, you know, we're kind of street smart in that sense. You yeah. know, you kind of know, you see an area yeah. like, all right, you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah, I think we have the common sense factor down as far as that stuff goes. So, and honestly, it's cool the way we go out and most bands do, I guess I would say, like, you're out there and you're kind of not, you're, you're out of the tourist area, which is great because you're, you're with but you're always with somebody from the area. Yeah. You're with locals. So like, we're smart. We're not going to go take a walk on our own just because we think it's okay. You know what I mean? Right. If you don't, if you don't know your area, you don't want to take a chance because you're not. Yeah. You know, yep. So we're always out with the guys, the promoters or their friends or whatever. Yeah. We're always out with a group or at least people that are from there. Yeah. And then, so we don't really worry too much in that sense. Cause you know, you always, someone who's always at least got your back or at least knows what's going on. You know yeah, what I mean? Like or even, the area. Yeah. I think every, we've been to a lot of like unique and, uh, places we've never been to before this past year and i don't think i felt unsafe in any of them no not you at go all. into them sometimes having those preconceived notions like wow i've heard this place could be you know yeah. very dangerous you got to really watch yourself yeah. and then you get there and you're like huh huh you know <laughs> yeah, exactly. of course you know it's still it, it still could be a thing but we're sure, just like wow sure. this is awesome you know and you're, yeah. with, you're with the local people and yeah. you know i think that kind of helps you get past that you're like mm -hmm. oh this is fine yeah. you know and, so. yeah. and the funny thing is is like especially like the a lot of the new places we went to this past year um in asia and in south even like colombia and, and bogota and stuff like that it's like we've never been there before or thailand and bangkok you know bangkok mm -hmm. and thailand you go there and you're like it's like being in new york yeah. you know like almost yeah. every place i could only i describe to people i'm like because they think oh what was thailand like what's bangkok like it's like it's like a big New York. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, it's like New York on steroids because yeah. it seems <laughs> much huge, bigger. Yeah. You know? yeah. And and that's all I can describe it. It's like, yeah, there's some different things going on for sure, but not really. You know, it's yeah. like in the end, everyone's kind of the same. It's just, you know, yeah, there's different well, languages. There might be different, some different customs, but for the most part, it reminds you a lot of it's very reminiscent of home, you know, yeah. in a lot of ways. Yeah. The world's a lot smaller once you've like done a lot of stuff like we have, like everything becomes smaller, you know, and it's just cool it's cool to experience so many different places and meet so many people and uh the cool thing is doing it in this context you're always in the club you know what i mean like when you go when we play a, a show and we're somewhere in a different country 
you have your people there. Those are, are fans. Those are like-minded people who yeah. are into your music. Yes. So you never feel alone, you know. You feel comfortable, you know, and it's very unique about what we do. Even in the context of like, okay, the promoter's going to meet us at the airport. He's going to take us out for lunch. He's always going to have some of his buddies, but they're all metal fans. So you immediately have something to talk about, you know, and most people are like-minded in our scene, you know. Well, not everybody, but, you know, for the most part. I mean, we have the Pretty music. Close. Yeah. The music is that common, uh, you know, thread. So it's it's different. It's not like we're just going out as tourists and experiencing new places on our own. We have people with us, and you're comfortable in the sense that you're in your community. This these are our people. These are our fans. You know, these are you know. I feel comfortable here. Yeah. You know, I don't feel unsafe. Everybody, and you know, we're one of the bands that you know we don't stay backstage. We're very accessible. We like to meet our fans. We did a ton of meet and greets in Asia. Every show, we would play the show and have a meet and greet with the whole club afterwards. So we'd get to oh, chance to meet so everybody. Cool. Right? Yeah. And, you know, it, it, and we'd sit there and they'd come up. We'd sign stuff. We'd talk to them. And people are people, man. I, it's, it's one one thing I've learned is like, man, it, it doesn't matter. You know, people are people. <laughs> you know, it's like no matter where you go, it's like, oh, yeah, just like people anywhere. You know, it's awesome. Yeah. So it gives you a different world view you know because if you're if you're i guess if you whatever you absorb from the media you know you kind of kind of have to separate that from the reality and when you go to these places like wow it's nothing like what i i expected or what i thought it was because of what i read or what i heard you know so it's best to go into uh, uh, these scenarios with an open mind yeah and you're pleasantly surprised oh right? absolutely yeah how um what do you guys think of Iceland? Yeah. Awesome. Uh, beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. I would live there, man. An awesome country. Like just the mindset of the people, the, just everything about it's awesome. We've heard amazing things. Yeah. And and we were pretty much in the you know, we I think we flew into Reykjavik, but we didn't really hang out in that city, which no. I've heard is really cool. But we went pretty much flew take another flight directly on the other side of the country, which was just and then drove another two hours or so yeah. to get to where we were for the festival and it was yeah. like it's all mountains, it's all country and mountains, yeah. and it was amazing, you know, I mean, and then the city it was in, which I, I could never pronounce if you paid me, <laughs> yeah. it, you know, you're literally like right on the side of a mountain, there's a whole it was I, an old river fishing village. or a lake or whatever it was, yeah. oh, and fishing cool. village, mountains, and it just looked, I mean, like postcard, you know, it was yeah. like, and it was just such a cool vibe there, you it know, was it was awesome. really something interesting for sure. Yeah, we always hear stuff about their black metal scene. Yeah. Like yeah. really standing out in Iceland. Yeah. Well, the wow. funny thing at that, the festival that we were at anyway, yeah, it was, was like everybody was super cool. And you would have like, you know, a bands like us and Belfagor go on one minute. And then you'd have bands like, uh, you know, like pop uh, pop bands yeah. from, from Iceland that we never heard yeah. of going on. And really? all the fans were the same. They'd all come in and yeah. get excited to see this pop yeah. band. And then they'd go out and see us. And then they go see some oh, other bands. Oh, that's so cool. Metal it bands, wasn't like non metal fest. Yeah. It was a music fest. Yeah. It was, it was a music yeah, fest. Yeah. 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 yeah it was plenty of metal there. But it was yeah. like, but those metal people you could see would also go to see this other band or whatever. You yeah. know, like they just enjoyed the music. They were just, you know, I guess happy that all these bands were coming there. And it was, you know, it was awesome. It was Good really vibe. cool. Good vibe. For yeah, a show, yeah, I can imagine. For a show with like such a mixed bag of genres, like there was no problems. People, everybody yeah. there was awesome, man. Like I can't stress how cool that place was, you know. It was That's just, cool. It sounds very just, cool. Really, man. It was very cool. I, I, I'd love to go back and spend time there. I mean, yeah. we only really were there and played the show and spent an extra day and left, but we didn't get to do some of the cool scenic stuff. We didn't do the hot springs. No. We, did the, yeah. we didn't really get to see Reykjavik because literally we flew in and it was all, it's like all, you know, all, all volcanic rock, you know, when you're driving to the, so we flew into the main airport and then we drove to a smaller airport, like Bob said, flew. We were on like the north eastern side of iceland facing like north like the north Pole. So oh, we were wow. like up there wow. man yeah jeez very cool and it yeah. stayed light like to like three four in the morning oh well, shit. it didn't get dark yeah it, it, it would get much. to like what would be like considered like, like late dusk. afternoon yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and that's it and then you come out of the show you know we played we were hanging out we come outside we're like 3 a.m <laughs> and it's like 3 a.m and i'm yeah. like what time is it? <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was, it was just so wild, you know? Yeah. So it was, cool. it was interesting, you know, it was definitely wild uh, to be in that situation. But it, it's good because it, it gives you that, in, you know, you're you're up, it's it's light out. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? If you're not used yeah. to that, you just feel like, oh, it's daytime, you know, it's, yeah. it's not that late, you know? Yeah. Uh, so it was fun. It was it was really cool. It was cool. I hope we have an uh, opportunity to go back there yep. um, again because everybody was so awesome people involved the promoters you know uh, awesome so yeah hopefully we'll get to visit again <laughs> yeah that's awesome um 
Okay, so let's talk about your lyrical theme for a second. Well, I have a question before that. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, so we were wondering, um, when you play a show, there's obviously a difference between like 50 people in the crowd and 200 people. Like when does when does it become like after a thousand and five thousand? Like where does it become? It's just a mass of people. A sea of people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we play the the smallest crowds of fifty, like mm-hmm. you said. To we've been lucky enough to play in front of like say ten thousand at mm-hmm. like brutal assault and those festivals. But it's, I guess the, the the big open air festivals are the ones that I guess the they're very cool for one reason, mm-hmm. but on the other hand, yeah, it's, you're playing to just, you know, you try and concentrate on certain people, but it's a lot tougher. It's not yeah. as intimate, obviously, mm-hmm. but it's got other things that make it interesting because you're playing in front of all these people and it's pretty wild, you know, mm-hmm. it's like a, a, it's an interesting feeling. Uh, but the club shows, I mean, we played just uh, on this last tour up in Canada in uh, uh, Sherbrooke. Oh, yeah, small show. Small show, oh, maybe about 50, 50 people. kids. Really? You would have thought there were 300 in there because they were so alive and energetic oh, and screaming cool. and yeah. chanting. And, you know, and that's like, that's great too. You know what I mean? So it's all, it always comes down to the, like the crowd. You know what I mean? Like sure. if they have the energy, then mm-hmm. it's, it always makes it a great show, you mm-hmm. know? But yeah, the smaller shows are always obviously more personal for sure. We, I think we enjoy the club shows better. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Well, when you have like, like a, a more club, of a connection. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. I say, like even like like the India show, it's like it was a big club, but it was like 500 people. What show? Not uh, India. Oh, yeah, yeah, So yeah. you had like, an, you know, there's 500 people, so it's it's still it's a not club small, vibe. but it's a club, a club vibe, vibe, and you're still there with everyone, and it's it's tight, but it, it and you could see the energy and feel it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So sometimes barriers, when you have a giant, you know, yeah, you have a giant, you're on a this giant stage, and the first guy in the crowd is like 25 feet away from it's you. It's weird. It's hard. You know, it's a little weird sometimes. Yeah. Really weird. So you, you you're really disconnected. Sometimes you feel like you're playing, and yeah, you're weird. sometimes it's, it's just like weird. You feel like you're playing. <laughs> sometimes it's weird because. You know, on these big stages, when you have like 20 feet before, like the people, uh, you know, are in front of you, there's a the big uh, security section and then the barriers. So there's like at least 20 feet between the people and the stage. So it's not as personal. It's not yeah. as intimate. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, it's weird because it's a big stage. Mm-hmm. So we're very separated, you know, but like Bob's all over there. Alex all over there. I'm in the middle. Steve's all the way behind me. And it's very hard to hear because it doesn't even feel like you're playing sometimes because, uh, you know, our stage vibe. Yeah, sometimes we feel like we're disconnected from each other. Like, yeah, oh, the rest weird. of the band's in the other room and I'm playing over here. You know? <laughs> it's very weird. And that yeah. can go for, you know, sometimes, luckily, sometimes the big the big stages can get a decent sound, you know, where it feels right. But then there's a lot of times it doesn't. So it's like, you know what I mean? When the sound's a certain way, which is normally on a stage like that, it's like, yeah, you feel disconnected, you know? Yeah. It's hard. You think sometimes, like, for instance, at the last Brutal Assault that we did, we've been, you know, getting smarter as we go into stuff like this. It's a festival, so not everybody gets a chance to really do, like, any kind of serious checks and stuff like that for the stage. So we made it a point, like, all right, no matter what, let's... Let's just play something quick so we could hear if I could hear Steve on the drums, if I could hear what's going on. And it's one thing for them. Okay, you got my guitar. Great. But if I can't hear what's going on around me, you know. Yeah. So we've done that. And that helped a lot because that show in particular, I remember we go up there and I'm like, yeah, I can't. I can't hear anything. So then we started telling the guys to bring. (laughs) we, We always. We're always very careful about the monitors. We usually don't use them if we don't have to, which is great for small club shows. It's rare that we even need to use them. Yeah. But for the big stage, sometimes you just have to. So we would end up putting drums in the side monitors and doing this and that. But at least we get it tailored quickly, even if it's like five minutes, just to, so just I can enough. at least, I know yeah. I can hear everything. Okay, yeah. at least we know we're going to be able to perform, you know, because if you can't hear anything, <sighs> it's a drag. It sucks, <laughs> you know? And the crowd out there is looking at you like, well, I hear all the stuff. So, you yeah. know, why sure are you so hear, They must hear everything. <laughs> yeah. but we, well, sometimes you're up there, you can't hear a thing. You know? Because yeah. you, can't, you can't enjoy it then. Yeah. Because you're so preoccupied with like, you know, I'm trying to hear stuff and like, uh, I hope, uh, you know. I, well, then it turns right. into a job. What? Right? Then it turns into a job. Well, yeah, well, then you're, you're trying like, to pay more attention exactly. to make yeah. sure you're you listening to your mark rather right, than just going and, for it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But that's rare. I mean, we have some quirky stages where it's like that. But I think in general, we enjoy the club shows because you're right there. The people are right there. There's no barriers. They're like right on top of you. 
And you get that energy. It's like right there. You know, there's that connection. It's some, you know, I mean, we grew up going to club shows like at Lemoor and CBGB's yep. and mm-hmm. Conan High. And those, those places were great. You're right there. Your favorite yep. band was like, you could yeah. touch them. You and know? you and feel the, you know, you feel the power. You feel it. The energy around that's you. That's what from live music from the is band, supposed to be. It's yeah. supposed to be. You're supposed to feel it. You know, yeah. you, that's why you're there. You, you, you feel that energy. You know, you're there watching the band you enjoy performing the songs you enjoy and nailing it. That's what it's about. Mm-hmm. You know, so. Mm-hmm. I have an aside to that conversation. Um, we've seen and read that you guys, at least lately, um, don't practice together. You just show up to a festival or a show and you yeah. play. Um, a lot of times. I yeah, mean, we did that for quite a few years. A number Ever of years, since, yeah. I think like in 2010, when I That's figured amazing. out how to actually write stuff on the computer, it was like, <laughs> huh. <laughs> no, we don't have to. We don't have to do this together like that. Like we don't have to be in the same room trying to come up with stuff or practicing because everything's right there, you know. And then once we got used to like writing and recording that way, which is what we did for years, mm-hmm. then we were like, you know, well, these are the songs we're doing. Everyone practice them on their own, and then we'll meet up and we'll play, you know. Yeah. Which worked out great for a while. Now, but now we're kind of like, yeah, I think it would be much better if we just at least get together two or three days before a tour work out any kinks, make sure everything's flowing right. It's always better for sure. You know, we just really didn't have much of a choice back then, especially mm-hmm. with working the full-time jobs and yeah. everything. Mm-hmm. Now it's like we could say, hey, all right, next Thursday, we're going to, you know, go out to Ohio and hang out with Steve and whatever, yeah. you know, and do what we have to do because we can, you know, so it's 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 an easier situation now. Mm-hmm. But yeah. mm-hmm. back then we basically had to do it the way we had to do it and we made it work and luckily it did, you know, but it, it would be interesting to go into a studio to record a new record and never ever have played all the, any of the songs together as a yeah. band yet yeah, until yeah. we hit the stage for the first time for that tour like that's six months later yeah, you know usually. <laughs> yeah it's just crazy but yeah. that's the way we did it yeah hmm. yeah it's it's just we you know uh, i think we first started that in uh, like 2007 after we did shadows because uh well for, for majesty in the k 2000 well i just no i'm talking that. about playing shows without rehearsing oh we did that. yeah we did yeah, a yeah. festival that's right <laughs> we did a festival and we were supposed to rehearse before it. that arnhem fest yeah we, we we broke out a new song we played world agony at that show which was a newer song we hadn't played live yet and we were just out of the studio and we hadn't really played actually that song i think we were, in, we were we were in the middle of the studio we were we literally were. finished tracking we went to do the fest and then we flew back to go mix and master yeah. it or whatever so mm-hmm. we were in the middle of recording and, and putting that album together and we knew we had the show coming up and it, we wanted to play one of the new songs so we just we just did it you know and then once we did that without any rehearsal and not really even rehearsing much of the set list because we we're working on new stuff that was it we were like no oh, we could do this so yeah <laughs> then we just were like yeah, yeah. we don't need, like, that, we need <laughs> but that being said you can only do that if every member does their part oh yeah. yeah of course you know? and we we're all good like that yeah. we're all pretty we'll you know, do our homework like when that. it comes to metal so, yeah. <laughs> so it only works that like that yeah. and we've done uh some rehearsals and by that i mean like maybe two nights at a rehearsal room like before like one of the the tour in march maybe yeah. and maybe not not even anything before the end of the year stuff because we had so many shows under our belts at that point yeah. the songs were just like yeah like you know whatever i think it started again once we got you know uh bill our old guitarist he was with us for 16 years he just you know he had decided he had enough for the moment you know just it was a personal thing he just didn't want to do the the touring anymore and all that so we had had gotten alex in yeah so uh uh, we got Alex and once we got Alex in is when we were like yeah we should probably get together you know because before that we hadn't you know we hadn't re- ever rehearsed for anything we were doing no. up until that point yeah and then we were like all right and then that kind of got us back into it and then we realized yeah it's it's really it's a better thing if you can do it and like I said it, we really didn't have as much of opportunity to do that in the past but it all kind of worked out once we had the new record we did it more for alex because he felt more yeah. comfortable hey i'd rather you know because you know he's more used to like rehearsing before so we're like yeah that's fine i mean yeah. we're not opposed to it yeah. just that if you, you don't have to, to do it yeah, yeah. Why, why waste time and, and now we're kind of like yeah it's kind of cool you know we yeah. enjoy doing it now yeah. we're like yeah this is probably a good idea yeah <laughs> well, that is because you know <laughs> you don't want to shit the bed like the first or the second yeah, show exactly. <laughs> like, oh, how does that go you know <laughs> has happened yeah, it's like what are you playing yeah I should that. <laughs> totally <yeah. laughs> all right can i get back to my yeah, lyrical theme question yep. are you done princess i'm done <laughs> <laughs> all right so you have a theme behind your lyrics obviously and it seemed to have started out uh religious based mm-hmm. i hate to use the term anti-religion because i don't know if that's really what it is is it um yeah in a lot of ways it is we were never i mean it was always about like we came from a 
being Catholic, we came from that perspective, you know, we uh, haven't gone to church and Catholic school and all that stuff. So we kind of, you know, uh, it was our opinion on, uh, it was our, basically our opinions on religion and its mm-hmm. place in the world. Mm-hmm. And we, we saw religion as a negative force mm-hmm. rather than a positive force, mm-hmm. you know. So that's what we wrote about, you know, but we, we came from that perspective. So yeah, we were anti-religion, you know, all of it. I don't see it. I think any. we usually looked at the darker side of it, though. You know well, yeah, I mean? absolutely. Like the abusive but, side of it. But we obviously know? weren't. And, and we've done that even more so as we've went on. You know yeah. what I mean? Like we've gotten more direct about it, I guess. So back then it was like, yeah, it was definitely like kind of more about, uh, you know, think for yourself rather than following something. And then we'd look at the darker sides of that. And some of it was fantasy in the beginning as well with, with that in mind. You know what I mean? Um, but most of it was just about how abusive it could be and the darker side of it you know and sometimes we'd use a lot of double themes too like uh later on like father you're not a father we talked about what the actual song's about which is about like the pedophile priest but then Mm -hmm. some if you look at the lyrics it's kind of like a double take where you could also take it into a family context in a way you know Mm -hmm. what i mean like Mm -hmm. you know what i mean so it's like it all depends on how you look at it so for us the idea of lyrics especially these days more than ever is to always uh, write them in such a way where they're kind of semi-ambiguous so everyone can get their own thing out of them. You know what I mean? Mm. It to, always to us, that's the most important thing. Is like I, I hate to try and say like this song's about this, this song's about that, well, and go through everything say, like yeah. a, a fine-tooth comb because every person looks at it differently and, and it means something different to them. And that goes for any kind of music, really. It's like any music you hear, sometimes the lyrics you might interpret exactly the way the artist is you know, laying them out there and sometimes you're taking your own meaning for them. So it's always better to us if if the meaning you got out of it is means something to you and we were thinking of something completely different then i'd rather you take your meaning and keep that close to you because have it that's yeah have important. your connection to exactly it. Yeah. that's really a comes personal down thing yeah. and then i find like when you explain exactly what something's about and where you're coming from it sometimes ruins it for people because mm-hmm. sometimes people think it's oh, i always thought it was about this i didn't know it was about that you know yeah. so Sometimes it's it's best to be vague, and I know I've talked a lot about specifics, you know, and I think we're going to kind of pull back on that and kind of just leave it open to interpretation, you know, even though we specifically have something in mind, we write it like, mm-hmm. f- for example, Father, You're Not a Father is obviously about, you know, abusive priests, you yeah. know, and the damage they do to young kids, mm-hmm. but, you know, but when we did that at the time, that was like 99, 2000, there were a couple of big cases that came out like in Brooklyn and a couple of different places around the country where there was a spotlight on that, you yeah. know, so we just kind of honed in on that. And we just wrote a song about that. And, you know, I think people will read those lyrics and understand what they're about and where we're coming from. But, you know, not necessarily. Some people may look at it and get something completely different out of it. So, mm-hmm. you know, but yeah, it's, it's, it's generally about the darker side of and, and we've kind of gravitated away from that because I think we've said as much as we could say with the first four or five albums yeah. about religion. Mm-hmm. And then when Unholy Cult came out was right after 9-11 happened. So our whole lyrical theme kind of shifted at that point because we just saw things differently at that point, you know, and we kind of looked more into the darker side of uh, ourselves, the humanity in general. And, you know, you know, how could something like that happen? You know, because we were right there. We saw it. We were down there right after it happened, Mm -hmm. you know. So we knew people affected by it. So it was something that kind of hit home and it kind of changed slightly changed our lyrical uh, approach and, mm-hmm. and where we were going lyrically you know and it it, it it encompassed more at that point and we started to branch out more you know it wasn't only religious themed yeah. you know? and I think so. we needed we knew we needed to do that well, as yeah, well we kind know? of painted so, ourselves in a corner and I think you know a lot of the early stuff like I said there were always double meanings so you'd use that as the avenue to, to, to create you know the song but you'd also be thinking about something else or that it could be taken a couple different ways and we, yeah. we did a lot of double meaning stuff so a lot of songs could mean one thing or another, you know, so what they are on, on the top isn't necessarily what they're about. So especially nowadays, you know, we're always trying to be, like I said, more and more ambiguous and just try and you know, most of the songs are always still dealing with the same themes, the darker side of mankind and, and what we see in the world, what's bad with the world, you know. And uh, that's the type of, that's the music. The music is dark. The feeling is dark. So that's the stuff we write about. Obviously, as you could tell, you know, we're not always dark people all the time. Well, very yeah, rarely, you know. Of course. But it, this is just, that's that's what we write about. You know, to us, that's, uh, we want the music to have the meaning as well. The lyrics are just as important as the music. Because, you know, you could have great music. And if the lyrics don't really aren't as strong, 
you know what I mean? And vice versa. It just doesn't work. You know what I mean? So Sometimes to me, it's always a darker, it's always the stuff that's hardest to say that has the most feeling to me. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes the stuff that's the most difficult to, to come out with is always the stuff that has the most impact, you know? Mm -hmm. So looking at that other side of our reality is kind of, you know, what we try to, you know, hone in on, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> I guess you yeah. could say, you know? And sometimes you want to shed light on certain things, like we said with, you know, father, you're not a father yep. or something else. You know, you're always trying to bring those things to light or like what we did with Kingdom of Conspiracy. We're kind of really, really looking at the world today and what's going on there in all different aspects. You know what I mean? From yeah, religious, I mean, political, this, that. But we did it in such a way that it still keeps it dark and you can interpret it, things differently. But, you know, we were looking at everything going on. You know what I mean? And, and yep. kind of like how... Yeah how things and what could be you know what i mean the way things are heading uh as well, we yeah. go like for example four string the divide on the new record is a song about just the many divisive forces in the world today whether it be religion or politics or uh, race or whatever it is it's just so many things that divide people today you know and intentionally and that's what that song's about you know it's 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 very broad but that's basically the essence of the song so and i think people get that you know from the title and when you read the lyrics and you know so it's it's not hard to you know kind of grasp that but you know we try to write in a way like bob said it's, it's somewhat ambiguous so you can interpret mm -hmm. it you know yep. a little differently you know if, if you're <laughs> yeah. depending on how you you know read read into it so so anyway so that's the point i mean you know we do have specific ideas and concepts behind these songs but you know you know i'm <laughs> gonna try to pull back as far as like you know Mm -hmm. leading people to that <laughs> yeah, you know and kind of yeah. let people use their imagination you know yeah that's to me the is the best part about any kind of art music or anything it's like you know it's up to really the person what they get out of it you know so obviously we put into it what we feel we need to and then yep. whatever the people get out of it is their thing and again like Ross said you don't want to ruin it for someone if, if you're thinking about this and they're really thinking about that and that's what makes it so much more powerful to them you don't want to really take that away from them you know what I mean yeah so, but, uh, but yeah, for the most part, it's always the darker things in the world that we look at, because that's just, like Ross said, it's hard, the most to, powerful. it's hard not to see it. I mean, yeah. it's well, a yeah. very dark world, you know, you know so unfortunately. Like, we look at that stuff, and we just, that's that's what we get uh, kind of inspired by for that for that music, you know? Yeah. Well, the music's dark, you yeah. know? You can't really write about, you know? Rainbows and sunshine. Yeah. <laughs> not that we would, you yeah. know, but I, I've always enjoyed the and darker look, things. Like, <laughs> we like all kinds of music. We like, sure. ex, you know music that's obviously uplifting and all different i listen Absolutely. to that stuff a lot but when it comes to what we're doing or this kind of music we feel this is the what we want to do this is how it should be done as far as the way we our take on it and so that that's what we're doing you know every band has a different approach yeah. you know of yeah, course everybody but our approach is is just that i mean we we try to um we're not obviously we're not a, a gore band we're not uh, a fantasy kind of band i mean we mm. try to talk about reality and we try mm. to talk about it in, in such a way that our fans get it and i think you know once they tap into that they they understand what the songs are about i've talked to a lot of people who either get the songs or they don't get the songs mm. like uh, you know and it's weird like you'll have a song that's pretty straightforward and someone say hey yeah i love this song to me it means this and it's like you know, how do you tell them what? Well, it's not about that. Right? <laughs> right. You're so off with that. But I'm like, oh, cool. But that's, that's okay. Awesome. You know? That's yeah. your experience. Yeah, you know? so, so have at it. <laughs> and I think we also try with the lyrics. We try and, for instance, when we're writing, which you know we're in the middle of doing now. When you're, when you're writing lyrics, you have you know there's lyrics that are, obviously you have in the song. But then there's sometimes you get to these parts in the song they're they're that much more epic, and you're trying to get something across. You know, it's like you want. So you're trying to use words that are a little bit more. I don't know, like paint more of a picture, you know, so yep. there's certain ways you say things that you want to be a certain more powerful, you know, and more epic, even through their words that you're using, you know, to make it, you know, that much more, I guess, powerful or dark. Yeah. Paint, paint more of a picture, so yep. to speak. It's hard to explain, but we don't know what the hell we're doing. That's <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but seriously, <laughs> parts when we're working on stuff and it'll be like a real, like, you know, I don't know, you get to that part in the song, like, oh, that's the part, that's the part that's kind of like tying the yeah. song together. It's a big epic part. It's like, and I'll say, like, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll say, all right, let's try and work on this because it's like you want that part to kind of like be that much more powerful, even lyrically, too, because it's sure. such yeah. a, you know, it's such a powerful part. So, you know, that's the way we approach it. You know, we're trying to look at every little thing when we're doing it, even though, like he said, we don't know what the hell we're doing, but at least we try <laughs> and put some thought into it and, and, and do the best we can. <laughs> The you lyrics are always fun to write, but they're always the most tedious sometimes because you, you're trying to find the perfect combination of words to convey this 
idea you have in your head, you know, and you want it to come out in such a way that people get it and they grasp it, but the, it also kind of illustrates that idea correctly, you know? Mm -hmm. So, you know, sometimes it doesn't always come out <laughs> the way you want it, but sometimes you get close, you know? So we hope for that. Yeah. <laughs> when we do yeah. It, so. Um, do you guys, after speaking, I'm sure to countless fans, do you guys find that fans connect more with your lyrics or the actual music? I think both. I think MO fans are, are lyric fans because they yeah, enjoy the lyrics. They, they like both, you know. They they always enjoy the music, but they always have something to say about the lyrics as well. Like they'll be like, "Oh, I, I like what you guys are, you know, what you're talking about, or that you shed light, yeah. light on this or something." So there, there's always talk of the lyrics as well so it's not just like oh you guys you know you're heavy cool you know <laughs> it's yeah. like always about like yeah. oh I, you know i like this you know i like what you do with this record this song's oh, sure. this is cool like or like they'll tell us this song's about this i love that and even though they might be off but it's still they're, they're looking at the lyrics yeah. you know what i mean so it's like well yeah, like like kingdom of conspiracy that was one that people really enjoyed the concept you know they really it's and a lot of people came up to us and were like wow you know <laughs> it's so awesome that you guys like dedicate this whole album to this idea this concept because this is our reality today this is what's happening today you know and uh we live in a very invasive world where everything is controlled and monitored and and uh you know and and such so people got that you know it was kind of loosely based on you know uh, orwell's you know mm -hmm. 1984 you mm -hmm. know and our world today and how his his foresight back then to see into the future and understand like wow we could come to this place and we're yeah. here already you yeah, know really. with the telescreens that are are recording your conversations and uh, you know uh collecting data and all this stuff you know and um so it's loosely based on that i mean we the ideas have gone beyond that of course for the record but that's kind of the loose concept of the record mm -hmm. but fans really uh really got it and they really appreciate it and that album in particular a lot of people were like hey you know i really enjoyed what you you guys said through the lyrics on this record you know it definitely touched something so that was awesome you know it's, that was the point <laughs> you know? yeah so. so as a fan for me i think i connected with you guys first live like being in the crowd mm -hmm. good because that's, that's yeah. kind of where you want to shine live. um that's amazing awesome. just like Thanks. i like yeah just mouth breathing staring at you guys the entire time like and then i went and like listened to you guys like a, on a musical level like you were like oh these guys are terrible no <laughs> but then i was like <laughs> then and then i studied the lyrics and i was like oh like they have shit to say like they're shame we try. like they yeah. try yeah and i so i kind of went i think backwards mm -hmm. than most people yeah and connected with you guys live and then worked my way <laughs> but that's a good way to connect though i mean yeah i mean anytime hope. you get you you're looking to get new fans by going like we talked about yeah. earlier when you're going on a tour it's always good to go with you know a larger act so you get in front of new people you know people that might not necessarily know the band and that's where they're going to catch you is live yep. and you that's where you're making your impression and bringing your music to them so if that's that's what we hope for is to gain people through playing live you know yep. that's that's Absolutely. really where you're going to gain most of the people i would think these days so yep. that's awesome to hear that cause yeah that's kind of why we're out there you know and it's always great we had a lot of that in the cavalera tour when we did the uh return to roots tour because we hit it like i said earlier in our before interview conversation you know a tour like that we reached a lot of new fans who weren't necessarily exposed to what we do and we had a lot of people on the next tour come up to us say, hey, I never heard of you guys. I saw you guys on that Return to Roots tour, and I was hooked after that. I oh, that has to be amazing. And that's that's what it's about, you yep. know? And I think live, that's the magic of live, of, of performing live, because you have that 45 minutes, an hour, or however long you have, but that's your moment to shine, and that's where you, you present it all to the people you yep. know and and that's it you know it's it's a do or die moment so you either do it or you don't do it you know mm -hmm. so it's nice when we get that feedback hey you know you guys touched me live in in a certain way that i i was inclined to go look at your back catalog and and, and investigate the band and, and now i'm a fan and that's kind of what we want to hear <laughs> yeah know, so. yeah um all right hold on because you guys like led into all my questions i know we're chatty yeah. well no you answered like <laughs> answered I, everything i should show you the that notes like a lot with us. holy <laughs> coal i don't know my we favorite talk, album <laughs> kingdom of conspiracy like uh, oh that's um, cool so that's one of your faves too that's cool 
Yeah, and I think it was because I noticed the shift in the lyrical theme. Like, sure. The music is absolutely like spot on, mm-hmm. but like I felt that shift in the lyrical theme, and I Definitely. connected with it. And that that was our first like quote unquote concept album because that whole album had that common thread throughout. Um, and that was the only album we ever did that. Atonement is kind of like that in a lot of ways. There are a lot of similarly themed songs on that, but then there's also some rogue songs that are, you know, yeah. you know, yeah. or, or obligatory <laughs> religious yeah. song and yeah. you know, stuff like that. But you know, yeah. In the end, it's, it's all about the same stuff. Exactly. <laughs> you know, it's about the world, <laughs> the world we live in. So, do you think a lot of your beliefs came from being force-fed organized religion? I wouldn't say we were force-fed. It wasn't force but it was just it was there you know i think school you just, and <laughs> you just notice it at a certain point yeah. in your life you're just like yeah you know because you're 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 you are given this from the time you're born you know so in your head you're like what's going on you know and then at one point you just kind of wake up and you're like huh yeah <laughs> you know and that's when you realize sure and i don't look we don't hold anything i mean we know plenty of people that are very religious or whatever and i don't care you know it don't bother me it's just like we have a certain idea about it and our opinion about it and that's what we put in the music it doesn't stop me from knowing people or dealing with of people, course. you know, so, yeah. you know, we're not like that. So it's like, it's just an opinion really, you know, and, and that's what we put into the music. Um, we put a lot of opinions about a lot of things into the music. So, but that's where it pretty much is most of the time. It's in the music and you can interpret it, like we said, the way you want yep. and that's it. Um, but yeah, it wasn't necessarily like, you know, yeah, I guess we weren't forced into it. It just, it was no, part of what we were yeah. at the time or our families were into, Yeah, you know, so once we weren't into it it's more tradition that was it. I guess. They, they realized that and that's the end of that it's not like you know you know what i mean it's like they yeah. don't hold it against us either so it's, you well know. we well, we we grew up i mean in yonkers i mean it wasn't like if we had grown up like somewhere in the south or something like that where it was like that and yeah. then maybe <laughs> yeah know? but it wasn't uh forced on us you know i mean it got to a point where i was like yeah, I'm, this is not feeling. This. I'm not feeling yeah. this at all. And why didn't, you know, I, I you know, you, 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 you're never really feeling it. You just kind of go along. With well, it. it's life. With the flow. It, yeah, it yeah. feels like it's. You feel it's, like you should be doing it because exactly. everybody else is doing yeah. it, and then you realize no, it's not the case. You yeah. know, so mm-hmm. yeah, question everything. You know, <laughs> exactly. Type of thing. Well, I think you can relate a lot to this mm-hmm. because you grew up in a Catholic yeah. household, yeah. and you kind of one day would. Yeah. did the same thing yeah. like wait a minute I was like whoa wait what yeah exactly <laughs> this doesn't make any sense the Sunday best, school <laughs> the best part about uh, my 11th grade year in Catholic high school was our religion class of that year the whole I, the whole premise of the class was questioning the, the existence of God hmm. and to me that was the best class ever <laughs> because uh, you know uh, you know you have a um uh, you know one of the brothers teaching this class and he's telling you okay if there is a god then how could this you know uh, god allow this and then mm-hmm. he'd point out all these crazy atrocities going on in the mm-hmm. world that has happened and it's just continuing to happen and it was a really eye-opening class and i had <laughs> felt like that all along uh-huh. but once i had that class i was like wow you know <laughs> now the way he presented it to us, it was just brilliant, and that was it for me. I was uh-huh. like, "Yeah, this is, I'm done." <laughs> You're like, "Thanks." Yeah. <laughs> he was like, "Wait, no, that's not People. what I meant." All the points yeah. I was feeling when I was to do it, you know. So. And that's then they canceled that class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was great. It was awesome, actually. Yeah. Anyway, um, I don't know that I would consider us like anti-religion. I'll use air quotes, but I think our belief is more around like, just don't be an asshole. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's pretty much Because yeah. I feel much. like the ugly side of religion is people use it as an excuse to do yeah. shitty things. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, and they have for centuries. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's just, I mean, well, it's about converting others to believe in mm-hmm. what you believe because that's the only way and that's mm-hmm. where it goes foul I yes. think you know what I'm saying yeah. and that and those fundamental uh, you know uh, mindsets that like it's this way or, or not you know that's that's where it becomes dangerous yeah and, it is, yes. and there's no line there it's just like it all blurs together with these people so and that's the scary part you know where it just becomes this blind dedication to some imaginary whatever you know and hey listen people are people I'm all for people having their own beliefs absolutely you know? just don't push it on me and that's you know w- you know you find that a lot though people trying to push that on you and force it on you and it's like no just leave me out of it I'm I'm fine with you doing your thing just mm-hmm. be fine with me doing my thing yep. and that's it and you know? nobody be shitty exactly <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly so if you guys aren't religious um, what are your thoughts on like life after death 
I believe in energy. I think it's just our energy just continues on. That's what this I believe. Guy. That's it. I mean, that's the only thing that makes sense to me after, you know, it's just like years and years of thinking about it. And it's like, it's just got to be energy, you know, it's our energy continues on somewhere, yeah. you know, yeah. and it's, uh, that's, that's it, man. It's all about energy. All about physics. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. What about Sounds. you, Bob? We just hope for the best. <laughs> <laughs> Buckle up. Do? It's like, we'll find, we're all going to find, we're all going to find out one day. So exactly. Right? That's I just right. Figure, when my time comes, I'll find out. <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> Yep. Not too worried about it. <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah. You make the most of it while you're here. Yep. And that's it. You try to live as as good as you can right now while you're 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 in the game. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you know? Absolutely. Be a good person exactly. to be a good person, not because you're gonna be rewarded when you die. Exactly. Exactly. There's uh, nothing hard about that. No. Just, I you agree. know? Yeah. Yeah. I ha I have a question about the emulation sound. Sure. Um so I you guys have both cited Possessed Seven Churches, I think, as influential. Definitely. Um, I hear some of the dark darkness of that record in your sound, but you, you guys don't sound like Possessed. No, definitely yeah, not. But, just, but um, it seems like you sounded like Immolation right away. Like you, you had a sound yeah. that was, it sounded really developed right on from the beginning. That's cool, because I mean, at the beginning... You probably saw more of our influences in the first album, but by the second album, I think we were kind of out on our own planet somewhere. <laughs> Here and after was its its own thing, yeah. you know, and I think Failures was its own thing. And I think from that point on, after the third album, I think we kind of fine-tuned the songwriting to a degree. Mm -hmm. So I think we're close and Unholy Cult and, and especially Harnessing. Harnessing was probably the most, you know, stripped down record as mm -hmm. far as being less quirky and and weird and just being like you know that's it it's stripped down and raw and these are the songs you know um and then after that what do we have shadows after that and then majesty and i think atonement was the one where it all kind of gelled mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what i'm saying i mean we were we got close a few times but i think atonement was the one that kind of uh, the songwriting was, I think, probably our best. Uh, we trimmed off all the the excess fat that we didn't need. Um, everything was refined. But I think the songs also on that album are, are special because they have, and we were just talking about this, they have all the elements that I think make this band what it is, you know, mm -hmm. from the, the extreme fast uh, uh, dynamic parts, the slow, uh, creepy, dirgy parts, and to the epic, weird, uh, like multiple layered guitar parts that kind of give you this big, grand, uh, whatever vibe. But I think that's what makes Atonement what it is, is so good. And I think that's why it got... Uh, we got such a good positive response for that one is because the songs had all those elements in mm -hmm. it, each song. Mm -hmm. Each song was a standalone. Mm -hmm. There was no filler in that album. And I think it took us a long time. It was our 10th record. So. Yeah. I think every album is a learning process and obviously we're always still learning. So I think that record just hit it off as far as the songwriting and as well as the production. I think we just, it all got nailed on that record, which yep. is great. And, you know, like Ross said, we've come close a few times and, you know, sometimes you, you, you get close, but you don't quite get it. But I think that one just kind of really, uh, we felt yeah. all the most comfortable with it. And then, and going forward too, it's like the new stuff, we're just trying to really like, you know, just get the most out of every song. You know, we don't want to have, we never really tried to have any filler, but I'm saying it's like more and more as you, <coughs> as you write and write and write, you realize okay, do I need to do this this many times? Can we get to the point a little quicker? Yeah. Can we make this part stronger? Is that part even necessary? You know what I mean? So <laughs> yeah. it's like, you kind of realize totally. that and you learn and you learn how to just write better. You know what I mean? Sure. It we just, could it, go back to those records and just pick apart every song. song oh, song I'm song sure you could. That yeah. could totally lose yeah. that. That and doesn't it's a shame because be there's some songs. Times. That could be four times. I mean, there's some songs effective. back there you know? that are like back in the day where I'm just like, wow. It's like, wow, that part I love so much, but we'll probably never play that song because the rest of the song is like five minutes of just like, what, what the hell's going on? You know? yeah. <laughs> and it took all that time just to get to that one great part. But, you know, well, that just wasn't, you know, I mean, granted, I, I still like the stuff, but it's like, we can't sure. play that live. You know what I mean? It's like, it's just too much going on. And then all of a sudden it gets to that great part that you're you're waiting for. But, you know, it took you long, too long to get there, buddy, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's like, you know, now I think we just, 
you know, we just learn to write better. You know, we become better at what we do, which you would hope you do after 30 some odd years. You yeah. Know? So, well, like at least say, we could say that. I think I can confidently say we've definitely gotten better at what we're doing. You know, uh, at least, you know, as far as we're concerned, you know, we feel better about the music that we're writing both musically, lyrically, and how we're, we're putting it all together. And, yep. and the fact that I think, like Ross said on this last record, every song you could play live, and we have. It's probably the first record yeah, we played we every song live since the first record, maybe, that, that we've actually went out and r- played every song live at one point or another. You sure. Know? Um, so that's the key for us, is just to create the best stuff that we can for that moment, you know? And I think as we have another album past us, the moment... You know, we get better with each moment because we're, we've learned from the last one, you know, so. Yep. And that's all you can hope for, you know, and, and and we just do that. We go forward and we try not to overthink it, even though sometimes we do, but we just try and just keep writing as best we can and be as creative as possible. And that's what it's all about. And that's, that's all we can do is just do our best and cross our fingers <laughs> and hope for the best. <laughs> you guys do your best for sure. <laughs> yeah. uh, close to a world below. You had some questions about yeah, that? I have another question first, though. Oh, okay. Um, so you guys always sound like immolation for, uh, I mean, every record it's immolation different maybe, but immolation. Yeah. Different. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> from record to record. <laughs> um, do you guys change how you write depending on the different drummers you've worked with over the years? Um, no, not really <laughs> because we just write, you know, you, a lot of the writing I do since the second record I'll always have ideas for the drums mm-hmm. and I'll, I'll, cause the first, here and after the first record, I had a drum machine. So once I got that and learned how to use it, I was like, all right, you know, and then I started creating all sorts of crazy shit. So that was it. It was over for us. <laughs> it's, it's like, it's like, I don't think, uh, uh, Craig still figures me for the second record. I <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. But I mean, what happens is that I'll just come up with these ideas mm-hmm. and then I'll present them. And then, you know, sometimes we use them. Sometimes we, we, we vary them or whatever, but, the drummers are always you know luckily we've been very lucky to have all great drummers in our career you know so and now with steve you know uh obviously he's been with us the longest and i feel he's the best one we've had and and he's he has his own style Mm -hmm. just like the rest but you know it's like i'll present stuff to him and then he takes that and then he'll add his own thing to it or sometimes he'll change stuff up but we're always we're always working it together and trying to make the best out of it together. So that's, in the end, that's what it comes out to. It's like everybody working on it together and putting in their opinions and saying, okay, you know, this is it, but let's see if, you know, does that work? Is that, you know, I like what you did with this, but you know, the original we had, this was better, you know? So it's like, but I like what you came up with. I would have never thought some of the beats Steve comes up with. I'm like, I'll listen to it for the first time, which, you know, of course, most of the time is in the studio when he's recording. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I'm just like, yeah, it's hard. I'll be like, what the hell is he doing? Yeah. <laughs> and then it'll take me a minute, but I'm like, oh, I see what he's doing. Wow, that's pretty cool. Uh, that I would have never thought of, you know, mm-hmm. so it's cool, you know, so we just, but the writing is always the same as far as when I'm putting the stuff together, you know, I just try and come up with as many ideas as I can for the music, for the drums, for everything. Mm. And then that's it. And then we, we kind of work everything together, you know, so the the key is that, you know, you have four guys that are looking at the music trying to listen to it trying to get the best out of it and especially steve i mean he's got the hardest job as far as i'm concerned you know because yeah you know Definitely. he's got to not only listen to what i'm trying to do but then he's got to come up with his own stuff too that works with it and see what he likes and doesn't like about what i did and then add his own stuff to make it his thing and and then i mean he's great at doing that and but then he's got to practice it and you know it's a lot easier for me to to come up with riffs and just play them it's not that hard with him. He's got to, you know, he's got to get all the drums down, work on his parts, and that takes time to get all that down, you know? So, the drums are a huge part of yeah, this I mean, band. They're a very big part. Yeah. And to me, they're one of the most important parts about what makes, say, a riff work, you know? Yep. If the riff doesn't have the right beat behind yeah. it, it could really make or break yeah. it. And I've always felt that, you know? Absolutely. So that's why my, when I'm writing, my con- I'm always conscious of the drums constantly, you know? Especially with a lot of the weird parts we do, I'm always trying to come up with something that I feel best suits the part, and then then we'll work it out together and make sure what's best or not but i'm always it's always on my mind you know so uh but that's a good it's a good system because he could lay down oops he could lay down a template you know in the program mm-hmm. to give steve an idea of you know because i think the hardest part for drummers is to understand the, the parts to understand the riffs mm-hmm. you know uh mm-hmm. so by bob laying out a you know a basic template i mean it's just kind of the beat to, to show the speed or to show like transitions or whatever whatever mm-hmm. he's doing but mm-hmm. it's it's a basic kind of thing to kind of give him an idea of like okay this is a template use this template and you know go for it and steve's great at coming up with just 
unique off kind of cool sounding yeah. parts, you know, and I think that's that's essential for like what we do. You mm-hmm. know, you need something you it just can't be all blast beats. <laughs> you know, it has to be, you know, <laughs> yeah. there's a lot of cool cymbal stuff and off time stuff. And he comes from like a like a jazz background too. So, you know, he's coming from a, a, a different place. So he has cool input, you know, yeah. so it's awesome, you know. So the process, to answer your question, the process is pretty much the same. <laughs> okay. It's I forgot just what that, the question was. Yeah, <laughs> the process has been the same. It, I think the biggest change in the writing process is when I first started using a computer to do it rather than waving my arms in the rehearsal room. You know? yeah, yeah. Pretty it much. just became, an, uh, it was amazing for me to sit there and write something and uh-huh. create drums and create overlays and sometimes even solos that I'll take from the pre-production and throw them right on the record because I like the way they came out. Nice. And it's just like, but it was just great to be able to create that and show it to the guys and say, this is this is the song. This yeah. is what I'm thinking about. And that's the way we've been oh, doing it. And it's like, you know, I'll play the song for them. I'll send it out to them. And, you know, like with the last record, I'd say it would be like, all right, cool. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, but at yeah. least I could present it to them in such a way where they could either like it, not like it, or say, okay, well, we well, could yeah. change this. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it's so much better than trying to like sit there. Back in the day, I would... Oh. I'd call Ross on the phone and I'd be like, "Yeah, check hey, this riff out." This is, the song, <laughs> it was like the song "Close to Where Below," yeah. eight, eight minute song. I'm like, "All right, check this out." It would just me, be me playing the guitar over the I'm phone to him for ten phone minutes. On the job, I'm a listening to it. And I'm, just, I'm like, "Listen to it," and I'll explain after. You know, like what's going on after, and you know, so it, no drums, no. I'm just me playing it through the phone. You know what I mean? so, so we've come a long way. You know, yeah. with the technology, yeah. and we've taken advantage of that, and and it's just nice for me to sit down and create a song. And at least have a represent what I'm thinking and feeling and say, here it is. Mm-hmm. Let's go from there. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's that that that's a big deal for mm-hmm. us. Yeah, you instead know? of hearing just like riffs in a rehearsal room or hearing something on a cassette tape that yeah. he recorded on a jam box, we're yeah. hearing a song that's almost completed. Mm-hmm. You know, you have mm-hmm. multiple guitar tracks and you have drums. Now you don't have vocals and bass, of course, mm-hmm. or, or solos. Or sometimes you throw solos. Yeah, in the solos are there. But overlays, I do a lot of overlay but, parts. So I'll, if I have an idea for that, I'll throw sure. it in there. So at least it sounds like you're listening to something real as opposed to just like Russ said, a bunch of riffs with nothing else. You yeah. Know? What helps you envision the f- the finished song? You know, helps you envision that. You know, so if you could hear, you know, hear it in that way. It kind of almost, you know, sparks new ideas. Like, oh wow, that part's awesome. We could do something here, and you know, maybe some vocal here. But you're hearing it more as a complete song rather than just a bunch of like shitty sounding parts. You know, yeah. you're trying to figure out. And you, you don't ever learn like once you actually learn how to play it. Like, oh, that's how that part goes because you're hearing it one way, and then you play it, and you're like, oh, it goes like that. It's totally different than what I'm hearing. You know, and that's a big thing for drummers too. Drummers oh, yeah. will hear riffs, mm-hmm. and you know they're not playing them, so they're hearing them, and yeah. you know they're hearing them a totally different way, and and it will say, you know, that part, and, and he'll hum the part, and like, what part is that? <laughs> <laughs> like, that main part, like that's how you're hearing it. Like, weird, you know. So, but this way, definitely, I mean, we still have that. we still have those moments, but I think definitely, totally, with the way we do it now, it's it's a lot more decipherable rather than sure. playing in a rehearsal room. Like, here's the riff; it goes like this, you know. He's actually got it to listen to. Steve could listen yep. to it, absorb it. And then what I'll do, like I've been starting to do recently, is send him, I'll send him the pre-production first with the drums and everything. He'll absorb it. And then I'll send him two separate tracks, just a metronome and just the scratch guitars, no more drums. So now he's got my ideas that I sent to him. So he knows how the song goes. Yep. And then he could sit there and work on stuff himself too without the drums blaring away there. You know? Yeah. So, and honestly that's what happens he does that and once he gets that down that's what he uses in the studio we didn't we don't play along he just plays to that pre-production with the click track yeah. and that's it you know so it makes it easier for us too it's pretty well, cool yeah. yeah you already have the scratch guitars because typically we'd go into the studio and we'd all stand in there with the drummer playing the song through yeah. to get a scratched guitar run for him and then he would stay in there and and get it until he got it right but we'd always have to be in there now mind you we were doing this back since the early 90s so we never did that yeah, yeah well, you know, we're going back to two inch tape days not yeah. digital you know yeah. but for so, us it was new it was great so now yeah. the fact that we could just let steve sit in there sure. with paul our producer and then he'll just be like all right come in and check it out like instead of having a you know it's it's actually more comfortable for him to just be in there with paul and do his thing and then we'll come in and listen later to sit there and like, you know, we'll go in there and watch sometimes. But I mean, you know, it's much easier for him to just be sit sit there, play along like he does yeah. in his rehearsal room, yeah. do yep. his thing and be like, okay, I'm done. And then we come and listen. And, and it's whatever. not stressful because yeah. we're not like on top of him, like yeah. <laughs> yeah. watching him play, yeah. you know, give him a, a hang up on something. Yeah. You know, it's just like he's in there doing his thing. And then when he's comfortable and he gets it nailed, 
they'll say, come on in, check it out, and we'll go yeah. in there and we'll listen to it. And say, okay, it sounds great, or sounds cool, maybe this part needs to be adjusted, or something sounds weird there, could you fix that? But, you know, generally when we come in to listen to it, he's comfortable with it. Yeah. So it's, I think it works, it's better that way. You yeah. Know, it's, you're not like... Uh, well, yeah, you don't want to feel like not that he thinks that, but you don't yeah. want to, you know, like it's hard enough in a studio, yeah, like we're judging, oh, yeah. judging him or something. It's like, yeah. especially like I said, the past few records are like, I think even the last record finally is when we we would hear some of the stuff he was doing because he had the he had the opportunity to be able to record himself with our stuff, even though we didn't really practice together a lot for that record either. But he would at least record himself, send it to us, and be like, yeah. oh, "Okay, we hear what you're doing," you know. But before that, it was like we wouldn't have a clue what it, he's actually playing until yeah. we're in the studio. So he would yeah. do his thing and we'd come in there and be like, uh, like I said before, like, well, already then. What's that? You know? <laughs> and then some of the stuff he's doing is like so, so unique and so interesting that you don't catch it at first, you know, yeah. especially me, if, I'm, if I've done the pre-production, I've listened to it a certain way. It's in my head that way for a year now, listening to it. And then he's doing some, something completely completely off, different from, than what I'm used to. But then when I hear what he's doing and I realize what he's doing it makes and sense. I get it, I'm like, Wow, that's pretty cool, yeah. you know. So, you know, so now it's different. Like now we're gonna we're gonna actually be getting together before we get into the studio for this record. Go over stuff. Like Steve's already working on stuff to send to us for stuff that I've done already. So, in other words, we're we're in the process now of just listening to Steve's stuff, and then soon we're gonna be getting together and and working on stuff together, which we haven't done in years. You know what I mean? As far as yeah. before recording a record, to to sit down, play the songs, go through them together, come up with ideas together while we're you know in the oh. same room yeah it's we've, hard. we've never done that before we're not so. like we're just so not like a typical band like when we yeah. go into the studio to do a record like we haven't even rehearsed together for that record like we're all in there for the first time playing these songs for the first time you and know not I mean, even we're rehearsing them yeah. on our own but yeah. we're playing them for the first time for real <laughs> you know in the studio yeah. so you don't know how things are going to work out and we're hearing like bob said that we're hearing what steve's doing truly hearing it for the first time in the studio so it is kind of weird because you're like, okay, you know, because there's been times like in the last record, he's had a part and he'll have spent a lot of time on this one section of a song and he's like, no, I got, I, don't worry. And he'll go in there and do it and it doesn't fit. And we're just like, mm, you can't yeah. use it, dude, you know, and then he's got to <laughs> like on the fly, come up with something different. So yeah. it was the only time. Luckily it wasn't, didn't, it was like one part or something part. that was really, you know. It doesn't but, happen that often, but it happens from yeah. time to time. Yeah. You know? But that's just. You know the way we're doing it you're bound to run into that once in a while that's only our mouth function that's yeah. my point like doing it the way we do it like mm -hmm. you do sometimes have a surprises <laughs> in yeah. the studio we've arranged songs completely in the studio after the fact like oh, steve yeah. has recorded his parts gone home yeah. and then when he hears the finished song it's completely <laughs> different because we're like yeah it's not working we'll just yep. arrange it digitally in the studio mm -hmm. yep. you could do that now. we yeah. to do we that weren't able to do that back in the day other tracks so and, and Steve will be like, "What the fuck? I yeah. didn't play this." Why? <laughs> like, again, uh, pretty much every record since the first one or second one, we'll get in the studio for two weeks to record, and that's when Ross and I start writing the lyrics. Yeah, for the two weeks that we're in the wow. studio recording. Well, and the that's first two we, records weren't like that. That's what like, I said yeah. after the second yeah, record. Yeah, yeah. So, so basically, like we're sitting there while Steve's recording his tracks. Ross and I are bouncing ideas around, writing stuff, yeah. coming up with stuff. So you know, so. Long story short, we had a song a few records ago where it's just like, you know, we have ideas of where the you know where the vocals will be, but then f sometimes we they're not the same idea. So oh, yeah. he'll yeah, be totally. like, ah, I really wanted to sing on that part, and I'm like, oh, okay. Well, <laughs> um, I thought you were gonna sing on this part. I thought this part would be better. No, I want to sing on that part, and I'm like, well, yeah, actually. That would be cool, but because the song's <laughs> arranged the other way, we might have to make some changes. Totally, so we yeah. literally had, Steve was already home, we had to cut up a track yeah. and arrange it differently. And I'm like, if you're going to do it on that part, we could do it like this as long as Paul can cut it up and do that, you know. And sure enough, it worked. And then when Steve heard the song, he's like, what the, I didn't play, what the heck? You know, because it was arranged differently, you know. And it was so funny. And honestly, it came out, it was definitely for the best. And it, and it, we ended up arranging it in such a strange way because of the way it happened that it actually made it the song that much better. So yeah. it was actually really cool. <laughs> Some that happens a lot. Sometimes I'll I'll start laying down the vocals and I was like, Oh, I don't know you were gonna do it like that. <laughs> <laughs> well the best is on the last no, on not, on Kingdom of Conspiracy, there was one part in one of the songs where oh. Ross had one idea, right? Okay, so he had the idea where he was gonna <laughs> sing it and I was like, Okay. And I'm like and then I, I said, Well, I was kinda thinking like this and he's like Oh, okay. That sounds cool, but all right. 
how did you want to do it? Because now he's been practicing it a certain way. I've been way. doing it one Not way for like had, a month now. Now yeah. he's like, we're going to change it right stuff, now. You know? Some <laughs> ideas he might have had, or if he didn't, he, you know, whatever. We, you know, like I said, we're writing a lot of the stuff in the studio. So yeah. even if he's in there for those few days rehearsing it now, that's the only way he knows it, regardless if it was a month or two days. That's what he knows. So he got it down, and then, then I'm like, yeah, try it like this. And he's like, oh, I like that. All right, I could do that. And then it was the funniest thing. I, I'd be there. It was just me and Paul and Ross in the studio. And Ross is in the booth, which is literally right there with a the curtain, you know. And we're going through the part and it comes up and then he's completely off. And I'm like, uh, and I'm like, all right. By the like 10th time, it would just be like he'd start out. And I try to explain it to him. And then he'd go into record, hit record. And all of a sudden, he would, one word would come out of his mouth. And then all of a sudden, he just, he made me and Paul like laughing hysterically. Like, <laughs> <laughs> because he would be like so I'm off. Like, it's a mental block. Because he was like the timing was he, weird. Yeah, he had his certain thing down. I was used to doing it one yeah. way, and now I had it completely. And he couldn't different. comprehend it. So it was odd well, timing, and I was all fucked up. We actually <laughs> ended up. He recorded it close enough, but we had we ended up sliding the yeah, parts. They, they moved it. So we recorded stuff. We were able to slide uh, bits and pieces yeah. of every word, or like if he did say ten words. We'd slide word two to go here, that word to go there, yep. and it worked and it fit. And now he's—it's like no problem for him now. But it was right. just so funny. <laughs> I remember that because all I remember is like I do the line. It was like one fucking line. That's all I had yeah. to do. It wasn't. Yeah. And I was so used to doing it the other way. And the way the music went, I was on time with what I was doing, but not on time to what they wanted me to do. It was mm. so off, and I wasn't used to it. So I had this mental block, and I would co- I'd start out one way, and I'd go back into the old way, and I'd stop, and I'd be like, how was it? And I'd hear them like crying, laughing, and I'm like, oh my God, I, I didn't it do it right. <laughs> <laughs> so that being said, I mean, over the past few records, uh, half, most of our career that we've done it that way, it's like I think we're finally going to try and go into this record where we actually, for the first time, maybe do vocals on the pre-production Some too. pre-production, yeah. So, the, you know, the get the lyrics done, get the vocals on before we get into the studio maybe and uh, <laughs> imagine just, that <laughs> we'll, we'll be able to enjoy it better. I mean we always enjoy it but like I it's told yeah. us it's like we, we enjoy it but there'd be so much less stress and pressure added if we didn't have to write and figure out how oh. to do the, all the lyrics and vocals <laughs> like right while we're there yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah like we, Majesty Majesty and Decay we had one afternoon into the evening to do the vocals like because everything mm. ran so late I had to do the whole fucking record like Sunday afternoon. Oh, we were running at a time because like, all the a- tracking took longer than we thought yeah. for everything else. So Ross had like a day and a half or maybe like a day to do the whole thing. Total fail. And it sucks because once you start rehearsing for a live show, you always think of shit you could have done differently. I'm like, yeah. oh, I'm doing it this way. I could have done it this way. It would have been so much better. I could have accented this or whatever. I'd done something different here. It would have made it better, but I, don't, I couldn't because I didn't have time, you know? So okay. that's what we're going to hopefully, you know. I mean- we're, we were lo- very lucky. Address. I think we did pretty decent considering the way we did it in the past how many years? <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. 10 records. Now yeah. it's like, okay, now we'd like to actually do that and it would be just better better for Ross, it's better for the songs, it's better for everybody, you know? It's just, and it's better for us not to have to sit there and write, you know, t- anywhere from 10 to 12 songs of lyrics it's, in the studio too. It's cool. It's I, I don't mind it because like we work well together so we're always bouncing ideas. So yeah, we'll just sit literally, he'll be at that side of the table, I'll be at this side with our computers. And we'll have our ideas and we're just working on stuff. And I'll say, hey, check this out. What do you think of this? And he's like, well, I was thinking of this. And then we'll like, oh, that, I like that. And he's like, oh, I like that. And then we'll just kind of work it like yeah. that. Structure yeah, yeah, just it's good to have yeah. Yeah, two different. Oh, no, it's great. It's just, we just, it would be nice to do it ahead of time. So now we can get A little in there more time. And just <laughs> go back and just record and only record. And yeah. then just kind of like, you know, I think it'll just be a, a nicer it. experience. Yeah. You know? yeah, it'd be nice to go it's to always great, and, But it's just nice to be able to have to work that hard. Yeah, exactly. It's just chill and then just record and not, and not write at the same time. Time. Lower was like the last song we wrote the lyrics for on this on this last record, and we were up to like four in the morning. We were like from like seven at night. We had our dinner after the session, and we sat down. We had the the concept, and we had a couple of ideas and a couple of lines, and we like we have to finish the song because like, tomorrow's fucking D day. I got to wow. do the vocals tomorrow, yeah. wow. and we literally were up to like four in the morning going back and forth like that. Oh, just like oh, try this. Oh, these are good. And then he came up with some great parts. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. That's exactly what we need here. And then sometimes we're not on the same page. You're like, here's the idea I have, and I'll explain it to him, and he's like, okay. And then he'll maybe take it in a d- different direction. I'm like, yeah, I wasn't kind of thinking of that because this is kind of where we're going with this. And then he'll like, oh, okay, I see. And then you know, so sometimes you're not on the same page, and then when you you finally get on the same page it works yeah, yeah. You know, so. but it's good because we you know we both like this we work well together and we're trying to come up with different ideas and and i think we trust each other and what we're coming up with too you know yeah that, and uh so you know it's a fun process it becomes 
Bob always comes up with my favorite lines. I'm like, asshole, that was a fucking great line. That's my favorite line of the album right there. <laughs> but it's like, I just rather Dick. do the process prior to the studio. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys are working on a new album. Yes. We have like six songs now. Yep. That's why he's up. He's teaching me some of the... <laughs> just heard the sixth one today. Nice. <laughs> That's amazing. Do you guys have like a timeline? Well, we're well, trying to get it. I'd say we're, we're, I'd like to be in the studio anywhere between, by, by the end of June, the latest, you know what I mean? Like be in and done with the, the record before the end of June, you know, maybe earlier, but yeah. we're, we're in the writing process now. We're six songs in and it's moving, you know what I mean? Like, cause now it's like, I'm really, I, I was concentrating on it for a while, but then we started, you know, we toured all last year pretty yeah. much. So it kind of got put on the back burner i was hoping to do some stuff on the road but it was just too much going on you know so yeah, uh, yeah we had three of these songs we actually rehearsed together for the first yeah, time back wow. in like august or whenever we went yeah to we Ohio. actually yeah. it's hard to believe i'm like wow we actually played these songs together three of these songs the first three songs together like last year sometime you know <laughs> so, so now i'm just back into the uh process heavily now and and you know it takes a little time to to get started that's always the hardest part even when you're coming in you know three songs in you're like okay here we go again but yeah. once i'm once i get started then you just got to keep going keep going and, and the more songs you get done the more i guess confidence or the more you're like all right momentum. now the album yeah the momentum's going but the, yeah. the album actually starts to take shape because as yep. much as uh i think you know everything sounds like you were saying earlier with which sounds like emulation but i think every record kind of has its own vibe absolutely for sure yeah and this one's starting to take on the vibe now yeah. once we're not you know once i got about four or five songs in and now we're in the six so now it's definitely taking on its own vibe now which is cool and and that helps in creating the rest of it too because it's like okay it's taking shape and i kind of i'm i'm getting a vibe now from these six songs that are together and now where should it go from here what yeah. else do we need you know yeah, you don't you don't really know the record until you have a bunch of songs like okay now I understand the record. Now we have a direction now. Now these songs together feel like something that should belong together, you yeah. know, and that's kind of how you proceed. You and know? that helps mm -hmm. me going forward in the sense of like, okay, because I, in the end, I look at every record as like one big song. Like what is the whole yeah. entity missing? You know what I mean? It's yep. like, if I'm, regardless of what, I guess, order they end up in, what's missing? Do I need something, you know, am I missing like, I don't know, it's it's hard to explain, but like, do I need something that's a little bit more energetic yeah, now? Or do I need something that's darker now or, or just slower? Something or, I don't moodier know. or heavier. Like, what, what what makes this these songs, what's going to make all this one full thing? Oh, you know I mean? yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. So yeah. that's kind of like helps me go forward. So the more songs I get done, the more it helps me move forward yep. in knowing what's yeah, missing. Yeah, that totally makes know? sense. So, yeah. Absolutely. And it helps with every aspect. It helps with the lyrics, you know. Sure. When you understand the direction the album's going in and you understand the mood and the feeling of the songs, they kind of, yeah. in a weird way, they kind of speak to you. Like, we'll have ideas and concepts and they'll only apply to certain songs musically. Like, like it's weird, but like, if you have one concept, it'll work with, let's say, this song musically because yeah. it's it's that kind of vibe. I'd say it wouldn't work with this song because it doesn't have that vibe. For the vibe. Because like, I'll, I'll have an idea about a song and then uh, sometimes I'll have to just have a lyric or, lyrical lyrical even like you said, lower, right? So yeah. that, that's the idea I had for the song, lower. So that was my title and I had an idea what it was going to be about. And then he suggested which song one through 11 he felt that should be lower and i'm like yeah you think so that should be like you know <laughs> and i'm like i don't know you know and then i'm like <laughs> then i'm like oh okay you know like he's good at definitely damn it ross figuring out like yeah this song kind of i feel i'm feeling this from that song i'm feeling that from that song and and, and it works you know so sure it's, um but yeah every song you know the music speaks to you the uh the idea once you have an idea then you have something to go on you know yeah. if you're just like yeah. i'm just gonna and honestly I, I sometimes the music speaks to you in the sense of, i'll just listen to music one of the songs I had, and I'll just, all of a sudden, lines will just start coming at me, and I'll start putting them out there, and sometimes they'll, most of them will work for that song, but it's just like, I'll just hear the music and imagine what's going to be going over it, and then some kind of lyrics will just come out, and I'm like, okay, that could work for something, you know? Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah. That's just the way it is. Sometimes, that it's a, for me, it's different. I'll have, I'll come up with ideas and lines and, uh, you know, whatever, and then I'll, when I start hearing the songs, I'll like, oh, wow, this song could do something for this song like this you know and you have an idea and you you apply it to that song and then you start to develop it you know with that song in mind you know just like bob said they, they don't work for every song they work with specific songs so yeah it's a weird process you know and you don't really think of it until we're like dissecting it now you know yeah. we're talking about it yeah and you just kind of it just happens and it's just organic you know but when you you stop to dissect it, it is a weird kind of process the way we mentally kind of you know <laughs> work go through, through an it. album yeah, exactly. yeah yeah 
yeah it's fun though and i mean we enjoy it obviously otherwise we wouldn't still be doing it <laughs> That's and certain. you're happily doing it we are we oh, are yeah. absolutely like you guys are friends you are family yeah. Yeah, absolutely. oh yeah, we're yeah. Not <laughs> it's like you can you not tell me? <laughs> <laughs> yep. It's like we spent a lot of time on the road together. <laughs> it's been a long 32 years. <laughs> but I think that's why it, it works so well as, you know, is because we're all tight and we're all on the same page. Yeah. And we, mm-hmm. we kind of like, I know we, we have a, a very similar vision. I mean, it's the same vision. You know, we know what we want to convey with the music and mm-hmm. the lyrics. So. As long as everybody's on the same page, the rest falls into place. You know, once you have the ideas, it's it, it falls into place. But that's, I think, the hardest is getting those ideas, and you know, building on them. You know, that's mm-hmm. the hardest mm-hmm. thing. Like when we went into Kingdom of Conspiracy, I had most of everything kind of mapped out. I had the whole concept. I have almost every song title or idea for each song, and then we just got in the studio and said, "Okay, let's develop this song." Here's yeah. my ideas for this song, and then that's it. We worked on it, and we we. Went back yeah, and once, forth once you have a direction, it. it's like, okay, you know, even if you say, okay, this song's going to be about this. It's yes. like, okay, cool, go. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Make, yeah. If there's no idea, then it's yeah. like a fail. You if know? I yeah. don't have an idea, it's a fail for me. And we've had a, some records where I'll have like a bunch of ideas for like five or six songs and then the last three or four, zero. And then I'm just like, fuck man I yeah. am fuck now and then I was like <laughs> come on Lyric Fairy yeah. come on <laughs> there's times we'll be in the studio and it's like he'll be like alright I'm done I gotta go to sleep you know it's like you know we're, cause we're up late you know we're yeah. trying to figure this out he's like alright I'm toast man so he'll go to sleep and all of a sudden he'll wake up and <laughs> and I'll like Ten leave songs. The, I'll like leave the stuff out there for him to check out and I'm like huh oh what's this Oh, 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 oh man! He's like, it's like the lyric fairy came. <laughs> Presented me with some lyrics. <laughs> this is good. I'm gonna use this. <laughs> Thanks, lyric fairy. That's amazing. He's like, I'm just gonna put this song under my pillow. <laughs> <laughs> so weird. Wait, totally. But it's like that, you know. It's like we've had some times where I'll, I'll just be so fucking done and oh, frustrated yeah. and have that mm. wall, you know, just no inspiration. And I'm like, I gotta, I gotta step off now and just take a break and go to sleep or whatever and then he'll just <laughs> and then I'll be up till six in the morning yeah, and I'll be like yeah here's some ideas I'm like mix <laughs> killed it uh, but yeah it's, 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 it's fun. fun I mean it's a process but we enjoy it and I think as hard as it is going into a new record it's like once we actually start creating it and it starts taking shape and we start working on the stuff it's and that's what makes it exciting like where can we take this now you know it's like we've been doing it 32 years it's like what can we do at least new for ourselves or as a band just you know you're, you're growing you're trying to take what you do and take it to another level or at least do your best at it and make something more interesting than maybe you did before or just keep it as interesting as it's been you know yep. so it's always a challenge but to us to hear new stuff it's always like ah ah that's cool you know it's like we enjoy it but it's the hard one of the hardest parts other than coming up with a well, set list but <laughs> yeah <laughs> doing that while maintaining like the true essence of what the band is and was what we started out you know without kind of deviating from that and going mm-hmm. into uncharted territories that will kind of uh i don't know just ruin it for us you know like you know some bands will t- like, okay we're gonna go in this direction now and totally fail oh, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. What i mean the, we what yeah thinking, we know what you know? we want to you know we know what so, we want it to be we, we don't want to we have yeah. no uh well, you know, we're not going to change it completely no. just to do something. You know, it's, like it's we, always been we important. Wanna, for we want to like it. We want to make sure not only that we like it, but we feel like, all right, this is immolation. This represents well, yeah, what we're doing. It has you know, to be. We have to be happy with it. Yeah, you know? it has to be something that represents the band, something that you know embodies what this band is about. You know, I, I, I can't see us like taking that left turn and you know pulling a cold lake or something like that you yeah, know we're like, just completely <laughs> off off track you know, like we'll have know. ross maybe actually sing on the next record you know he'll actually well, yeah do exactly <laughs> like we wouldn't do anything like that <laughs> you know what i'm saying we, you want to keep it uh, you want to keep that essence well it's like emulation intact. plus vibe yeah yeah like you, you guys are emulation sure. but each album takes on like a different vibe sure but it's still it's still us though yes. you know i don't want to you know dilute that and make it something different you know we don't and, and want that either no so that's, <laughs> so we always keep that in mind yeah. and that's you know that's one thing we're always conscious of throughout the whole process yeah he lets the music take him in all kinds of different directions but we still try to maintain that essence throughout yep. the whole process and if there's mm-hmm. something that's like 
I don't know. Yeah. I'm not comfortable doing that. It's yeah, not something fail, we would do. Or maybe or that sounds like something we did before. Or, or whatever, that sounds you know, like this band. And yeah, I don't yeah. want to even touch on that. It's yeah. not who we are. I'm like the QC guy, you know, the quality control guy. We're like, <laughs> well, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Steve, Alex, and Ross are like the, you know, it's like I, I throw it out. <laughs> keep the them pe- honest. <laughs> I throw it out into the peanut gallery and I hope for the best, you know. <laughs> but that being said, that's rare, though. I mean, oh, no, usually, I know. 99% of the time, I love what he's presenting me. You know, there are a few cases where I'm just, I don't know, it's kind of generic sounding or that kind of reminds me of something else. And I'll say, here, this is what it reminds me yeah, of. Yeah, and I don't even like, as soon as anybody even says that, I'll just drop it. It's like, I don't even, you know, I don't even want to go down that road. You know what I mean? If someone's like, this kind of sounds like that, I'm like, all right, yeah. forget it. <laughs> you know, it's like, I don't want to. And we've had, like we said before, we've had times where we've changed stuff in the studio. No Jesus, No Beast was one of those songs. He had a part in No Jesus, No Beast off the third album. And it was a weird part that came in the middle of the song during the heavy section, and it was like a really kind of uh, like an upbeat kind of part, and it just did not fit there. Remember was that one? That was that one. It was no use, no beast. Yeah. What's the other song I'm thinking about too? Was it Burial Ground? <laughs> That oh, one too, right? Maybe Burial Ground too, but, but that maybe, was earlier. Yeah, no Jesus but no Jesus, no Beast, because I we, we were actually tracking yeah. that, and I was started to goof on. I was like, jumping oh, around, yeah. like, you know. And he was like, I was like, I don't know, dude. I'm not well, feeling this part. Because we dropped into this heavy, sick part, and then it kind of went into this weird upbeat right. part, and it did not fit. And I was like, I don't know, dude. You know, you know, and you hate to be like that. We're but like, it's like not feeling it, and he was like, all right, gone. So we get rid of it. So yeah, it's not a dictatorship. It's like we all have our say, but you know, he usually delivers the goods, so there's not really too much to critique, you know, other than arrangements. Well, or maybe it's it's short years part of critiquing or, that gets you in a good direction, you know? Yeah. 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 And that goes with all of us. We all know what kind of like works and doesn't work, you know what I mean? Sure. Yep. And even if it's something that's great, I, I've come to learn over the years that less is usually more. Yeah. It's like, wow, that's a great part. That doesn't mean you have to pay it like 25 times in the song. You know what I mean? Because then it'll ruin it. You know what I mean? I've, I've gotten to the point where I'll come up with a part and it'll go four times and you'll never hear this again in the song. But honestly, that's what makes it the part that it is. You know, if you uh-huh. do that again later in the song for certain parts, it would kind of ruin it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's, mm-hmm. it's just a matter of kind of knowing what works and how much it needs to go. You know, it's, it, it's just a learning process that we've, I think, gotten... <laughs> better at it. <laughs> they're like these guys are great we don't have to ask questions i know you literally <laughs> touched on everything we, in our notes yeah, I shut know. the fuck up <laughs> like i have a question about no jesus no beast yeah. uh the chorus who came up with the chorus um you know, the great can you hear us death to jesus that part yeah it's oh, awesome remember. I don't remember. We were just talking about that song. I don't remember. I love that chorus. We did it together. We probably did it together, yeah. (laughs) All right. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) To be honest with you, I mean, that's that's a while ago now, you know. A lot of the That's a good chorus. What? That's a good chorus. Yeah, it's a sick part. Yeah. Probably Bob came up with it. He comes up with all the lines. I like this. (laughs) (laughs) Damn it, you dickhead. (laughs) Bastard. Um, Let's talk about Death Fest. Yeah. About 2005? Yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you guys remember 2005 Death Fest? Maryland? Heaven Sound, yeah. Was that? Sound Problems? Um, was oh. that the year? 2005. 2005. Wait a minute. Was that, ha- did we have Sound Problems? Yeah. Was yeah, that, that's about, let's see, with 32 years, it's about 30 years of our career. So. <laughs> <laughs> you had to be more specific. Was that the year Napalm played? <laughs> Napalm Death played? I think Napalm was on that. Was I um, still at the Sonar outside? In the- Cryptopsy was the... Yeah. yeah, it was at Sonar. We played like during the day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I remember. Well, I don't know if it was the day. No? I think it was later at night. Oh, maybe. I don't remember. And I think Cryptopsy was the headliner hmm. on Friday. Maybe you guys were Saturday. Maybe, no yeah. clue. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I know it was a long time ago, but... Uh, sound was shitty? No, no. Um, we Not your fault. Know- oh, you might not know this, but we, we happen to know somebody that was responsible for unplugging your power during your set. Two or three times. Two or three times. Oh, really? Oh, By mistake. Power. By mistake. Oh, wow. Yeah. Really? Oh, I don't remember yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. And and we're, we're without mentioning his name. But uh, we're, we're, hey. <laughs> oh, hey. <laughs> I didn't say it. But anyways, uh, we're awesome. wa- we forgive him. <laughs> <laughs> we love Barrett too. We asked um, for his permission to talk about this we on did, the show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't even realize it. So if you guys he said bring you, it up, we would have never I, known. <laughs> oh, shit. Because <laughs> sometimes up, I kind of remember something happening, but I. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> it's like we have a lot. We've had a lot of sound, quote unquote, problems yeah. over the past 30 years. So it's hard to pinpoint and remember all of them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well. He was like one of the fans, like way up front, 
And he, I think he kept tripping over one of your power cords, uh, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that could be a fail. Hey. And, it, and we saw how you guys went to wireless systems at one yeah. point, and we thought we it would about be that. really funny well, if Barrett was the reason. <laughs> well, actually, it was, our, it was one of our techs in Europe was like, you guys, you know, you need to get some wirelesses. You got to stop dancing with cables every night because we're constantly, you know, dancing yeah. around the cables and trying to... Well, the know, thing is, we had wirelesses for like a hot minute a few years back, but... They didn't yeah. really work that great, so we just mm -hmm. yeah. we didn't bother with them anymore. But then uh, our friend Peter showed us something that was like, you know, we didn't realize how advanced they'd become. And, you know, it uses yeah. like Bluetooth technology and it's like, it's like yeah. flawless. And we're like, wow, yeah. these things work amazing, you know? And, and ever since then, we've been like, it's, it's just awesome. It's Not like that we are to untethered. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> nice. It's a nice thing. You know, I don't have to worry about that. Totally. Nice. Um, do you guys listen to a lot of music? Yeah. Yeah. Do you avoid music during like your writing process? Uh, maybe he does. Yeah, I, mean, I, I listen mean, to music all the time, so it depends. It depends. Sometimes, I mean, a lot of times I'll, 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 yeah, I'll avoid listening to a lot of stuff because I'm just trying to work and get in my own space. And you know, especially like even our old stuff, I'll try to avoid. Which now it's you know we have shows to rehearse for, so I can't avoid it. But you know, sometimes in my head I'm like, I don't want to hear my old stuff. I don't want to play the old stuff. You don't want to be want it to, I don't want it to leak into, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, I mean, an influence is one thing, but it's like, I don't want to end up, yeah, coming up with parts that I, you know, whatever. Yeah. Ironically, it's usually the non-metal stuff that inspires you. Yeah, I'm more inspired by mostly non-metal stuff. Like, I love, like, Depeche Mode. I like Muse is super cool. I love that band. Uh, there's a lot of cool stuff I listen to that just, I don't know, whether it, it either comes close to being dark or not dark, or it's just the way maybe the, the musicianship or... Or like uh, like a Depeche Mode that's just dark in a different way, or whatever. I just to me, it's all about the feeling and the music. Which same thing for Ross. It's like no matter what music you're listening to, it's just that vibe and feeling that you sure. get from it. And that's what to me is the most interesting when you're hearing stuff that's just got the most feeling. And whether it's a band or whether it's an orchestration or sure. something between the two of those, you know, it's just to me, it's 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 inspiring. You know what I mean? Even if it's not even the particular music. It's just the inspiration of like, wow, listen to all that stuff together. And oh, how of course. Sure. You know, so yeah. It, I'm inspired by music in a lot of different ways, whether it's directly yeah. or indirectly. Yep. So, and I'm sure mm -hmm. Ross is the oh, same yeah. way, you know. Because so. you'll hear something that's non-metal and you're like, wow, that is fucking awesome. Like, like you, what a great section. Yeah. What, a, what just a great arrangement or wow, that's an awesome, what a great idea. You know, it would be, you know. Well, assholes. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> you go see a movie and the way they do the music sometimes is cool. Like, yes. you know, I don't know. There'll be something leading up to something and the music will actually help push that forward oh, in such yeah. a way. How they create a mood and yeah. they build it and just, uh, you know, the intensity or, or whatever it is. It's yeah. like, that's the kind of stuff that's inspiring because you hear that and like, mm -hmm. wow, it'd be cool to create something like that. Not the same thing, but like yeah. to build like a vibe like that in one of our songs. And he's good mm -hmm. at doing that, like taking non-metal stuff and using it as an inspiration and kind of running with it and say, I like to create something that's like that, you know, not yeah. that, but something and make it ours, you know, and use that as an idea. And it's, it's awesome, you know? Yeah. I think when writing, we're always trying to just do something. I mean, obviously, yeah, look, it's two guitars, a bass and drums, you know, so you're limited, you're limited <laughs> to an extent, but yeah, unless you start drawing in all the extra tracks and stuff, which I know a lot of people do and that's fine. You know, it's great. But you know, I try to use what we have, the tools that we have, and, and do it in such a way that creates a certain vibe and a certain emotion that maybe you don't normally hear with just, you know, the chug of a guitar. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you try and oh, be more course. creative yeah. with what you're doing, as creative as you can be, at least. And and anyway, yeah, I just get inspired by a lot of different things. So it's... Uh, it's I almost... Guess, it's fun to hear what he could create with just a guitar. You know, like he creates some really cool sounding parts with just a guitar and you listen to it like... Wow, it sounds like more than a guitar, but it's really just a couple of layer guitar parts. I mean, maybe doing different things or, you know, uh, whatever, but it's, it's unique. So it's always cool to hear what he creates with just the guitar, you know? And, yeah. And, you know, it can make it sound like, you know, an orchestra sometimes, you know, with just the different parts. No, it's just, it's yeah, it's just sometimes, you know, you have a good part and it sounds good, but if you put something on top of it that drives it home, you know, that much better than it just adds to it, you know, it's sure. like, why not? You know, at least we have is two guitars. So if one guitar is doing one thing, and then you you push something else on top of that 
to create a different vibe that maybe even makes it darker or something yep. together with it, then that's even better, you know. So yeah. well, it also gives the music more dimension. It's not just one dimensional. It's it's layered, so it has you know you know what I'm saying. It's it's mm -hmm. it's different, you know. And that's yeah. what I always mm -hmm. liked about like that kind of stuff. And I don't mean the the straight up riffs, you know, like the fast riffs of this. I'm talking about the riffs that he does that are just kind of open and they have all the parts over them doing something completely yeah. different. Yeah, the usually complexity. Like, usually like yes. the heavier yeah. parts or the darker part, you it's know, just more interesting. Parts, it just yeah. adds more. Sometimes I do it on the fast parts too. It depends on what's, you know, what calls for it. Sure. But, you know, sure. but, um, but yeah, I try to listen. I, I do listen to music while I'm writing, you know, it's like, I, I, I just, I guess I try to avoid uh, some of my, or, like I said, our earlier stuff or other stuff that I think I might be influenced too heavily by, maybe stuff that I really like in the metal stuff, I'll try and just keep away from that for yeah. a while so I don't get too influenced by it, yep. you know. And honestly, you know, when I'm in that writing mode, that's what I'm doing half the time anyway, so I'm not I'm not listening to too much, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, to answer your question. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. <laughs> this is so easy. Yeah. <laughs> just turn the mics on and like vacuum clean the house it's like, you didn't talk well about oiled machine yet, though. that might be a nightmare <laughs> we no, got a lot of it's perfect so what's the edit editing process like for you guys <laughs> oh no I think he meant for you guys for you guys <laughs> oh, oh. You guys, like, you know, oh gotta, yeah we're fine you gotta go through everything and like alright you know <laughs> no we're fine it's all gold yeah, yeah. gold uh, do you guys listen to podcasts at all I can't say that I do. Yeah, not really. No. I'm yeah. not too much into the, too much. I listen to like, for instance, I have the, uh, what we were talking about earlier with Danny, um, Spotify. I listen to, you know, musically, I listen to a lot of the online stuff because I just go to like a record or whatever. I, I listen to stuff that way, but yeah. I just, I don't, I can't say I listen to a lot of podcasts, no. I'll We've listened honest. to a couple, like you know, our drummer did a couple podcasts. Oh yeah, um, I mean, if I if Steve's like, oh, we did this interview, yeah. which is another funny story. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, and then we'll listen to it. But I generally, I you know, I'm not going. You know, I just you know, just never think of it. You know what I'm saying? Never. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, one like if, if Steve like if Steve's done a couple of podcasts with um, oh, what was that? After all. Jeez, I keep. <laughs> but he did he did one before the album came out, which was kind of funny, and then he did one. After the album came out, uh, you know, as a second part to that, and they were both mm. really good interviews. So we, you know, we listened to those when they aired them. So that was pretty cool. But uh, yeah, generally, you know, I'm just we're not pod savvy. What can I tell yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, sorry. yeah, it's all right. Sorry. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> it's not a personal thing. We just, you know. <laughs> so Spotify, as a fan, I think is awesome. Oh, I think yeah. it's great. It's like, look, when we like stuff, we'll go buy it anyway. We usually we get probably we'll probably get the LP before we get the CD. Honestly. I uh, will get the vinyl before anything else. But the thing I like about this Spotify is that you can just sit there and you think of a song or a record or a yeah. band, sometimes the most just off, out of nowhere mm -hmm. stuff, you know, like uh, stuff that's not that popular and you'll just throw it in there and there it is, you know, it's like instant, you know. And so to me, it's great because you could just, I feel like listening to this right now and you yeah. punch it in and there it is, you know, it's like you don't have to take stuff with you. You don't have to think about it beforehand. You have, you could have it in your car, you have it with you. It's, it, it's just great. You know, it's, to me, it's an awesome thing. But when you like something, you definitely, I like getting it, you know, we'll get the LPs or the vinyl and to oh, have that is that? awesome, you know, it's like to, to have the artwork and to have, you know, the layout and everything in front of you yeah. too is great. So yeah. we still buy CDs yeah. and vinyl so, I mean, all you know, the time. So I'm, I'm to me, still it's just an added, it's an added feature to, you know, just loving music and being able to have, it's the access to anything you want to listen to at any time, you know, you can't really say that's a bad thing. <laughs> Well, there's, a, there's another question answered that I didn't even have to ask. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to ask if you had the same opinion as uh, as a musician. Oh, well, you know. to us, if we're on Spotify and people, mm -hmm. I mean, look, we don't, as far as music goes, whether you're selling albums or on Spotify, <laughs> honestly, I mean... At least this band, we're not making any, uh, you know. We're not making that much noise in <laughs> yeah. the sales department. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, for us, it's just a way to promote the band further, you know. It's I mean, like, people find us on Spotify, awesome. Or if they have the opportunity to listen to us easier on Spotify, great, you know. I mean, that's just cool. the way the world went. You yeah. know, I mean, there was a lot of pushback to the digital stuff mm -hmm. back in the day. With, uh, was it Nap Napster? Napster. Napster. Yeah, yeah. Napster. Yeah. You know, and you know, back then I was, you know... I wasn't even like a big internet guy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was like CDs and vinyls. So I think the record issue industry just had to figure out how to catch up with it and, and yeah, how to handle yeah, it. And yeah. I guess they, I think they figured it out by now. So sure. It is what it is, you know? I mean, 
it to it, me if the music's out there and people have access to it that's the yeah. most important part i mean as far as you know when we go out on the road that's where we make most of the income for the for the band yeah. so as far Pretty as much, that goes yeah, so. i'm happy if people listen to the music and get into the band that's a plus for us you know just that fact that they know the music they have the opportunity to listen <laughs> yes. to it that's fine you having know? your music easy easily accessible by anybody in the world you know at a you know just by clicking on something that's a great tool to have you know yeah, then you yeah. could you could play almost anywhere and you 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 know you have people who are familiar with your music you know we didn't have that back then we had the cassette tapes we were mailing around yeah. to people so yeah, right, right. it's an it's 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 good in a sense obviously you know you could talk about the negatives as well but i i, I mm. see it as a good thing in a lot of ways you know now so and your fans are still buying your stuff. I mean, we have emulation and albums and CDs, yeah. but we still stream you too. We've talked about that. Yeah. See, metal the metal community is unique in that sense because I find the metal fans like myself and Bob and all of us here, we buy physical products yep. still in addition to maybe streaming. You yeah. Know? So yeah. that's the unique thing about the metal fans. They will buy physical product because yep. they, mm-hmm. they're still avid collectors and they like the physical product. And... I think that's how we are as metalheads, yeah. you know, and I think it's yeah, very yeah. unique to this genre, you know. I don't see many other genres, you know, like that, where fans go out of their way to purchase yeah. at shows, you know, even, you know, record stores or, you know, whatever still exists today, you know, or ordering online, you know, they still order CDs and buy vinyl at, at you know, at, you know, online or at shows. So that's awesome. Yeah. It's, the metal community is great like that. Yeah. So. And even if it's not the music, it's merch shirts merch yeah. yeah well that's our lifeblood anyway yeah the merch is kind of what mm. you know keeps bands afloat you yep. know uh, you know on any tour really it's it's the absolute truth yeah, yeah. Sure, yeah. and know. i feel like metalheads like really understand that though. they do yeah they do metalheads are great you know they i mean really we're we're fortunate to be part of like such an awesome you know scene you know <laughs> absolutely yeah yeah all right so have you guys googled yourself no, but my mom has. <laughs> my, she, 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 I'm like, no. She's like, oh, you got to see all the stuff that comes up. And it's like, I, I don't really care. <laughs> so, Ross, for you, it's all about your hair. Oh, awesome. <laughs> Not so much me, of course. Yeah, Bob, unfortunately. Bob, it's all about the hair. <laughs> Bob, for you, it's gear. So I, it's I, hair and gear. Gear. I'm not really a big gear guy. <laughs> I, those are the the big Google hits. Hmm. Yeah. Maybe they're curious of what gear, perhaps. Maybe, yeah. But since it's like different every other day, then I don't know. <laughs> See, what people don't understand, we're not huge gearheads. Yeah. Alex is probably the biggest gearhead in the band. Like I Alex mean, knows about gear yeah. and guitars and the, the, you know the technical aspect behind it. We're just, mm. I mean, you know, plug well, and you're go. endorsed, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. don't get me wrong. I, so that I think that's like, it. Yeah, yeah, of yeah. course. Like yeah. ESP, we've, I, you know, I've been lucky enough to be with them. Uh, for a few years now and the stuff really is amazing the guys oh, at the awesome. company are yeah. amazing Alex who's been a fan of ESP for a long time when I got him hooked up with that once he joined the band he's you know he's just on cloud nine now being a superstar like, <laughs> like he just, he's even that much more like he'll, he'll just he'll get guitars but then he'll go buy some more too you know yeah. <laughs> he's a guy. he yeah, has he, a collection of guitars like, yeah, he's, he's a I guitar have, expert so I have friends like that like Don uh, my friend oh, yeah, Don yeah. plays guitar in a hard, New York hardcore band called Breakdown and he's a guitar guy he has like a shit ton of guitars really awesome guitars you know and they're like just legendary New York hardcore band from like back in the 80s you know yeah. still going And but he's a guitar guy you know and I'll hang out with him and he shows you know he's he talks shop with me and I'm you know I wish I knew more you know some some of the specifics you know but I'm just kind of like whoosh, you know yeah. they're awesome though he's got some mint guitars though you know so but I always say you know I'm an Ibanez guy these guys are ESP guys yeah I mean once you we know enough that when you use something and you 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 know like I started as soon as I started you using ESP I was like wow this is this I could tell the difference you know what I mean and then uh, we've been lucky enough to get a few different guitars from them. I've got a couple of seven strings from them. I got, you know, a few other guitars and the ones that I use live with emulation and, and you can tell, and, and Alex, you know, he's great cause he knows so much more than I do as far yeah. as some of the particulars. So he'll be like, ah, oh, you know, this one's great cause it is wood and that and blah, blah, blah. And, yeah. and he's like, uh, you know, we should try the, uh, you know, those Fishman pickups are really good. You know, we should check those out. I'm like, yeah, all right. So I happen to, you know, w- one of the ESP guitars that we got in Europe, that Alex got was a uh, as a Millet from it was a signature series from Millet from uh-huh. Creator, 
So he had got my guitar, and he had a couple of them. Mint and guitar. my guitar failed one night. One of you know whatever. I think I had just a, a, a hardware issue on one of my guitars that happened on the spot. So while that was being repaired, I used his other guitar, and it had the Fishman pickups. And mm. so we're both using that. And I'm like, wow, I can really tell the difference. Yeah. Says, you were right, you know. And it sounds amazing. <laughs> and then sure enough, now we're using Fishman's. You know, we're endorsed by them too. So it's like, you know, so you learn as you go, and you say you you know you learn through what you the stuff that you use, and you're like, wow, that's. You know that's good stuff so you want to stick with that because it it works and it and it sounds the best you know so that's yeah. so that's what we go by but yeah. again we don't follow it so much but then when you get the product and you're like wow this well, is all right. yeah it's more like you know what you like like yeah. i played ibanez since the beginning like you know my first the, the first bass that i ever bought was an ibanez it was destroyer x series which was like you know jeff becerra's old red uh destroyer bass it was like that but it was like uh the next model so it was a little sleeker and then I bought the old bass player from Rigor Mortis, uh, Andrew Sakowitz. He had the same red uh, Destroyer bass that Jeff from Possessed had and that Cronus from Venom had. You know, the big one. So I got one of those, the red one. So I, those are my first two guitars. And I've been playing Ibanez ever since. And when they came out with the Sound Gear series back in the late 80s or whenever the hell that was, I got one of those when they first came out. And that's it. That's all I've played yeah. ever since. Since like 90, 91, I've played Ibanez... Uh, sound gear bases because they're just comfortable you know I, yeah. I i like the company and then i didn't get endorsed by them until like you know a couple of years ago <laughs> i mean I, but i've been playing ibanez exclusively since like the 80s you know mm -hmm. so i just mm -hmm. never thought to even seek out an endorsement and it was on mm -hmm. a tour we did with deicide and skinless and glenn was meeting the ibanez rep uh, at one of the shows in LA and Joe from uh, Skinless was using an Ibanez bass and the Ibanez rep was coming out and they were like, hey, we'll introduce you to the guy, you know, you're an Ibanez guy and yeah. it was easy. It was like the guy was nice. super cool. He hooked me up and I've been endorsed since then, but that was like 2005, 2006. So it took me a while to get there because I guess you don't, I know we don't think that way. We're not like, oh, we should get an endorsement. You're just like, hey, yeah, know. we're just kind of like, I got a guitar, it works, I'm good. You yeah, know? exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But then that's so, what happens. Like with me, it's like I had a few different, you know, a few different models of guitars, different brands, you know, and I liked them, but then I tried something else and I'm like, oh, this is actually better. And then I got an endorsement from another company. It's like, oh, this is even better. But then when ESP came along, I was like, wow, mm. this is really good. <laughs> so yeah. it's like, you know, and you know, your tastes change over the years. But I mean, for me, once I got, with, you know, with ESP, I'm like, yeah, wow, this this is good stuff, you know, and, and I, I use the arrow. Uh, it's like kind of like, you know, the V, but like the half V. Yeah. Type. And it just works so well with what I do on stage. And I love the other guitars. I still use those once in a while on stage, but definitely off stage, you know, the regular Strat bodies that ESP makes and stuff. Yep. But those those uh, Vs and arrows and, you know, because I know, uh, I forget the one, I think Alex uses the regular V and I got the arrow, but either way, those just work better with me live the way I'm moving around. It just, yeah. it just works perfectly. And the guitars are built really well and sound great. So, you know, like Ross said, once you find something you really like, you stick with it. And and they're just great at the company. So, you know, I got nothing to complain about. Yeah, yeah. it's like been a really good thing. You know, I got us. like a ton of the exact same bass guitar, but I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy you know? like, That's all I need, you know. So. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> I'm red over here, which means... You're red. Yep. I have a nonsense question. Um, we have a nonsense is, answer. <laughs> you do? All right. You don't have to answer this. Um, is is Turbo by Judas Priest the equivalent of Kiss Dynasty? Well, okay. <laughs> I'm going to piss off a lot of people, but oh, you I was opinion. never I like a Kiss that. fan. Me I never liked Kiss. And I had all my Me friends neither. in the 70s, all hardcore Kiss fans. I just mm. never got the Kiss thing. So whatever, it's each his own. Um, ironically, the Turbo album was the first album. It was the first time I ever saw a Priest on that tour. Really? Yeah. And I was like, oh, it has to be this album. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I had an opportunity to see him during Defenders, which is like my favorite record, yeah, my all time yeah. favorite Priest record. And I was just too young. You know, it was one of those situations where I was just like, mm -hmm. man, whatever, 14 or 15. And I couldn't yeah. get the ride to the show. And my buddy yeah, had an yeah. extra ticket, but I just, it fell, you know? So yeah, one of those. Same deals. thing happened to me. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, and then yeah, my man. friend's sister couldn't make it. And that was our, that was it. That was our ticket to get in there. It was yeah. our ticket to stay. I was like, yep. wow, total fail. Total <laughs> fail. Yeah. So I saw him on the Turbo, uh, Turbo Lover, it was Turbo Lover, whatever it is. Yeah, the Turbo, Turbo, yeah. I, I saw sure them on is. that tour, and it was yeah. good. I mean, yeah. I go back and I listen to some of that record now. I'm like, it's not that bad. Yeah, I, I actually it's like good. it. It's heavy. It's a lot weird, of people, but I like yeah, it. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. yeah. 
People beat up on it, but I, I like yeah. it. It was almost no, like I, Maiden in the Somewhere in Time phase, yeah. you know, yeah. Like yeah. kind yeah. of era. Yeah. All yeah, those think, bands kind of went in that weird futuristic yeah, mode. Yeah, they you know? went with that kind of like uh, sym- symphonic yeah. sound or whatever yeah. you call it. Synthesizer thing. Yeah. That was like big, and then everybody was doing it for that hot minute. And so. Somewhere in Time was good. We saw them a couple yeah. times on that tour. They were awesome. But uh, mm. that was my first time, I think my only time seeing Priest, unfortunately. I, you know, I, I would have liked to have seen them on this last tour with the last record, because the last record is fucking awesome. Yeah. But oh yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah, what are you gonna do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of those records from you know earlier on when you're younger, and then that band comes out with that record, and you're like, hmm, you know, <laughs> you know. Like, yeah. But then you know, ten, fifteen years later, when you're old and you listen back, eh, you know what? That's a pretty good record. Yeah. 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 I'm but like when that you're lot. younger, you just kind of like yeah. instantly you were following a band for like two, three records, <laughs> and all of a sudden they come out with that one yeah. that's kind of like you're like fail, sure, you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, right. <laughs> you just, you know, you're just like your head, you're you're looking that direction. You don't want to know nothing about what just yeah. happened, and then later you realize, all right, it was a little more closed minded yeah. when you're younger. Yeah. Nowadays we're just like, yeah, yeah I, I could. Appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. I get it. <laughs> so, that's how it is. <laughs> you good? I'm good. So, uh, new record is Nuclear Blast again, or you know, well, sure. we're gonna resign with them. Yeah, we're just yeah, we yeah. just awesome. you know finalize that. But yeah, we're happy with them. They're happy with awesome. us. They're gonna extend the contract now for a couple more records and. So that's where we're going to be. That's that's our that's home. Awesome. <laughs> so you know, cool. we're happy to say that because they are a good company, and it's probably one of the most positive uh, label experiences we've had. You know, in our career, good. I mean, we've had we've had good label experiences. Like every label we've been on had its positive. Uh, uh, you know, has strong points and its weak points. You know, mm-hmm. and I think a lot of the weaker are are. Our perception of the weaker points of these labels was just our our expectations, know, our, our, our knowledge expectations of the being too maybe, high, yeah. us being green. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You yeah. know, when we first signed our first deal, we didn't know what to expect. We thought once you signed a record deal, that that's it. That's you know, it. They're going to do everything for you. You're done. But then we realized, you know, right after that, like, wow, you have to work even harder now. Yeah. You know, it's, it's like it's getting your album, getting an album out is just one part of it. But then you have to work that much harder. And we thought it was going to be different, you know, and we're like, all right, well, you know, we learned a lot in those earlier years and we made a lot of stupid mistakes and, you know, but we learned from them and we've learned a lot about the business and we've kind of, you know, move forward from there, and you know we don't hold any uh, grudges or yeah. you know any I mean, now animosity just, or any ill no. will towards any of the older labels. We're, we're friends with all of them, actually. Yeah. You know, but it's just like they weren't a good fit for us. Like Nuclear Blast seems to be the the proper fit for us, and maybe it's just mm. and it's a of the timing time, thing. You know? Yeah, we're at one point now where I think you know I think we're we're at the best we've been, and then you know it's just all kind of it's a timing thing. You yep. know, it's like. And it just worked out, and we're happy with the way things are going. And you know, we have a really good relationship with them. They're very down to earth, uh, very cool people, and it just it just worked sure. out well. So uh, we're very so, yeah. fortunate. I mean, yeah. to have a label that's where the people in the, at the label are actually fans of the band. They're actually behind what you're doing, which is it makes uh, a huge difference. Which is very yeah. it's unusual for us to have that. You yeah. know, and so it, it's nice to have that, and it feels good to have. A company that's actually actually believes in you and is pushing you, you know. So we've never had that really. Not that we felt, you know. I mean, it was there, but again, we our expectations were unrealistic back then because we weren't familiar with the industry yep. and how mm-hmm. things worked. So, you know, but we learned we learned some hard lessons in those early years. You know, we had like a five year gap in between the first album and the second album, and that's because of that because mm-hmm. our expectations were unrealistic and we were very soured on the whole industry thing and the label thing and we wanted out of that road run the contract and yeah. and we got out of the contract they actually did us a huge favor which was unheard of like we got out of like a seven album or five album contract because we went down there and said hey we don't want to be part of the label anymore we're unhappy and they let us go and we still talk to monty about that these days and he's like man you were the only band back then that we <laughs> we let go like it's that pretty amazing it was and we were lucky i mean they could have held on to us and, yeah. and, and busted our balls and in retro Respect. We realized they did us a huge favor, but we didn't see it like that back then. Right. We were just like, we're not happy, and we just told them. We went down there. We said, we want to have a meeting with you guys. We went down there. We had a meeting with them, and we just said, yeah, we're just not going to write any more music until we are off the label. So if you keep <laughs> us, we're just not going to write any more music, you know. And they said, okay, well, we'll let you go, and that was it. Huh. So they really did us a favor, man. Yeah. Monty hooked us up, man, and uh, man, we love that guy, man. He's he's he was um. 
you know, luckily the people we we dealt with in those early years were were solid people. They had, you know, they were straight shooters. They, they weren't like blah 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 industry. People. Yeah, like, he he told he us told like us it was, straight. and he gave us actually some good advice back. He then, really did, sure, man. So. And he's always been like that. Monty's always been a straight shooter, man. I respect the guy's opinion, and he's a great guy, man. He's been a guy that's been part of our our, our career throughout you know the 32 years and now he's part of nuclear blast so it's like full circle type of thing but yeah, yeah cool. he taught us a lot of really important lessons back then because we needed to, to learn a few <laughs> things so <laughs> you know so mm -hmm. uh, you know we we did a lot of made a lot of stupid mistakes but we've learned from them so that's what you could hope for i guess that's what we do yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right is there anything that we didn't touch on no, I think we got most of it. I think, I think we just want to thank you guys for yeah, the thank opportunity. Thank you guys. This was awesome. here and uh, no, it was very cool. Very we had yeah. a lot of built really up time. To talking. We had to yeah. get out. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't yeah. done an interview in a while. So. I know, exactly. Lucky we got, you. got us on a good moment. Yeah. You know, so. We apologize to all the listeners. No, <laughs> no. Don't do that. Gold. We're yeah, so looking good. forward to the album. Awesome. Absolutely. Can't yeah. wait. Thank you guys. Cool. Thank yeah. you guys for your time. Yeah, thank you. We appreciate it. I'm glad we made it happen. Yeah. Yeah. Worked out. Thank you guys very much. All right. Good night. Music over. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>